Well, hello everybody. Dennis and Canoe Hound Adventures here. Hope everybody's uh, doing well and is comfortable at home and uh, gearing up for a great night tonight. Uh, this is episode number 25 of Canoe Hound's Outdoor Adventure Show. Yeah, we've hit the, uh, what do you want to call it? I guess the quarter century mark? Or <laughs> That's pretty good. 25 episodes of uh, Canoe Hound's Outdoor Adventure Show. And uh, it's going to be a fun show tonight, uh, something that's a topic tonight that a lot of people have been asking me to talk about on the show because they know I have a dog. And I just thought that uh, this would be a great topic for this week, uh, especially seeing as I didn't have a guest lined up for this week. Um, it's not always easy to line up guests, uh, especially at these times where everybody's uncertain as to uh, what's going on. But anyway, so Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show is a uh, weekly live show that's geared towards bringing you closer to the great outdoors. Uh, we'll bring you hot topics and uh, YouTube creators that you like to watch and follow. Uh, we're live every Tuesday night, so make sure uh, you put it on your calendars that uh, Tuesday night is Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show night, and you want to watch that, uh, much like uh, watching your favorite TV show, only here on YouTube, and it's free. Uh, you can follow us on uh, YouTube or on Facebook as well at Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show if you want to know and keep up to date with what's coming up with the show, and uh, it'll give you uh, some insight as to what our guests, who our guests are going to be or what the topic's going to be from week to week, and I always post some really fun things on there as well for you to check out, so uh, make sure you do that as well. Uh, right now, I just want to get this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 thing done it over with so that we can move on and have a great show tonight and not have to worry about talking about it. Let's take your mind off it. But I just hope everybody is being healthy and safe and that uh, you're following your local government's guides uh, to try and nip this thing in the butt. We want to uh, really crush that curve. So, you know, doing all the things like social distancing, stay home if you don't have to go out. Make sure if you don't have to go out, stay home. It's so important. Uh, Let's try and crush this thing. You know what? Because the longer it takes to get rid of this, the longer it's going to take for all of us to get our behinds and our canoes and out on the water. So you want to make sure that, uh, yeah, definitely follow the guidelines, uh, washing your hands, uh, staying away, the social distancing thing. I know it's not always easy to do, especially when you're dealing with loved ones. Uh, you know, maybe you have an ailing mother or father or something like that, or grandma and grandpa, or, you know, your kids live uh, away from you and you want to see them. Make the sacrifice. Let's try and take care of this whole thing. And please, please stay safe and healthy. And if you have anybody that's affected by this, uh, my prayers go out to them. Uh, I hold. I think of what I think of everybody when this is uh, this is all going on. Uh, let's see here. I just ask that right now, if you can take the opportunity to try and share this out on either your social media or your YouTube uh, community tab, if you have that just to get more people in the house so that we can uh, make this a, a really worthwhile show tonight. And I'd also ask or say that uh, last week I had a couple of people who shot me super chats. Um, I don't always see it when it pops up on the screen, but I just want to shout out and say thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, super chats go a long way. It helps me be able to uh, do swag and stuff like that and mail it out to whoever wins prizes and things like that. It's uh, it's not totally necessary, but a super chat goes a long way by all means. So if it's something that you're up for, feel free, but don't think you have to. It's, uh, I'm not asking for it, that's for sure. Uh, and also, as you know, I love to hear your feedback. So anytime after this show is posted, feel free to watch back or even just pop back in later in a couple hours. And leave me a comment below just to let me know what you think of the show. Hopefully you smash that thumbs up and subscribe to Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show or Canoe Hounds Canoe Hound Adventures for that matter. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's uh, let's break this community wide open and uh, get uh, word spread that this show is really sharing good stuff about uh, the whole canoeing, backpacking, bushcrafting, hiking, uh, cycling, whatever it is that you can do outside. Let's uh, let's spread word that we're going to be talking about it. And let's see here, a bit of an announcement. This is at 8 o'clock tonight when we're doing our swag giveaway just after. You're going to want to stick around. I have uh, I have some breaking news, a uh, very important announcement. I'm going to have uh, one, possibly two guests uh, just joining in for a few minutes to talk about it. But just to build some hype and excitement, we got something really cool happening. And you guys are going to think, like, this is a great idea. You're going to really want to uh, take care of this. Uh, 
so yeah make sure you stick around until we do the prize giveaway and then of course after that we're just going to have our regular overtime social hour and you can stick around and participate in the chat or whatever you want to do uh right now while we can i'm just going to uh shout out i'm gonna shout out some of our uh people in the, the live stream or that are joining in tonight here i may not get everybody but uh i'm gonna get through some of them we got uh cool quest uh, a new channel i just started following check them out by all means hit their subscribe button and uh and uh, help them build their community we also have adam romano explorers we have kirk wicker whipper voyager center susan shepherd the other guy in a canoe christina negarth Adventures with Josie, uh, Backcountry Paddler. Uh, who else we got? Camper 69. Two's Cruise is in the house. Uh, and uh, did I say J. Peter Halliburton? We got also Mark Anglia and a number of others. I just want to thank you all for popping in tonight and joining the uh, the live stream. And heck, I even see my daughters in here tonight watching. Erica Rogers. How you doing, hon? Good to see you. Okay, so... With that being said, everybody knows that uh, that's been here before. This is a, an interactive live stream. So basically what that means is we've got our topic tonight of uh, uh, dogs in the back country, what you need to know. I've got two, uh, two great guests that are going to be on with me here to talk about that. But if you have any questions for our guests, be sure to put the word question in capital letters before your question and then your question. And that'll help me identify it on screen. I'll pop it up on screen and uh, we'll get somebody on our panel to answer that question for you. So uh, let's make it interactive in that way. Uh, that's about it, I guess. I think we should get right on to the, uh, to the topic of the show because that's what you're all here for, right? Uh, tonight we're going to be discussing everything you need to know about bringing your dogs into the back country. And uh, my two guests, my first guest is a regular on the show. Uh, his many years of paddling experience with his faithful companions by his side, the odd time, <laughs> uh, makes him a bit of an expert on this topic, and he's very knowledgeable. That I would say that would be our good friend Kevin Callen. How you doing? Well, actually, it's funny. I thought you were going to put Preston up on that. <laughs> so cool. Oh, you just ruined my introduction for the next oh. guy. <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> okay, we got a. Let's see here. We got a. Are we doing a hat thing tonight? I don't know what I'm doing. We're all we're all going stir crazy. We're doing whatever we want. You, be, you. you're awesome, Kevin. You're awesome. Anyways, my uh, my second guest is a popular Canadian writer, speaker, and outdoor advocate, known for his unique style of humor and his ability to convey his message in a genuine and approachable way. He's the founder of Portager.ca, and he's happiest when he's paddling or wandering the province with a canoe on his head. Uh, he sums up his attitude with the motto, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. When he's not on the water or on the trail with his portaging canine partner, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy's a dog, yes. You can find him in his, uh, you can find him championing uh, various programs and initiatives that promote the rewards of getting outdoors. Please welcome to the live stream tonight, Preston Sear and Nancy. Oh, how are you doing tonight, Preston? Oh, wait Very a minute. Good. Angel. Come on, come on! Oh, uh, I, I can't even put Molly on screen. My oh, wife my took her. Do tricks because she's a dog. I know, I know, I know. Oh, oh, God. God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Show with me. Sorry, yeah, I, I don't. Have I think you got the big no there, Kevin. Dog, Preston. So this is uh this is Nancy down here to uh, Preston's left, right. left, left, right, to right, Preston's right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Your left, everybody on screen. Yeah. Yeah, we're working from home like everybody else, so we're in, we're in our PJs. That's all right. That's all. Oh, hey, yeah, uh, he's even Nancy's even got a uh, a matching uh, <laughs> doggy thing going on there. That's yeah, all. Like PJs. <laughs> Sorry, Angel. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So, but with this topic, we we actually have a lot that uh, we can really cover on this. Uh, this is good for anybody that uh, may already be bringing their dogs into the back country, whether it's hiking or camping or running beside their uh, their bicycle or you know paddle or you know what do they call it inline skating or whatever. If you're if you're getting your dog into the back country, this is really a good thing for you to to learn. And there's a few topics that we're really going to touch on tonight. One's going to be uh, introducing your dog to a canoe or the outdoors. And at what age, maybe, you know, you could start getting them broken into that. Mm. Uh, a controversial one. I'm sure we'll get all kinds on this one here. Leash or no leash. 
<laughs> uh, sleeping accommodations. If you are camping with your dog, uh, how are you going to make your dog comfortable when you're in the back country? Uh, some safety tips, some medical kit ideas, uh, keeping your dog clean. Nothing worse than uh, just getting ready for bed and your dog decides to go for a swim without you. Uh, uh, or, 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 that's a or, or, yeah, we'll get to that. Or, scenario. <laughs> we'll get to that one too. Other dog eats poo. Like, or, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Or no, rolls no, in it. Or no, rolls no, in no. it. I, I can't. And Nancy has a bad habit of rolling in poop. And yeah. Poop and yeah. yeah. My poo, okay? So yeah, yeah. I'm not tripping with you ever again, Preston. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, then yeah. Uh, what else here? We got uh, what to pack for a dog as far as gear, food, treats, toys, things like that to keep them comfortable. Mm -hmm. There again. And then uh, maybe we'll get into, uh, you know, what kinds of, uh, what breeds are really good for the type of things that we're doing. Um, if, if that really makes sense, right? Because, you know, but any dog could do this outdoor thing. So let, let's starting out with uh, introducing it. Well, first off, Preston, tell us about Nancy. Oh, well, Nancy is um, a famous canoe dog. Um, she was born in Louisiana uh, sometime before or after Hurricane Katrina. So she's a Hurricane Katrina survivor. And uh, she made her way up to Canada, uh, in particular Hamilton, where I live, um, because they were they had so many dogs down there that were just kind of abandoned and stuff. She was pregnant. Um, she uh, after giving birth, she was about 13 pounds. And for some um, um, a comparison, now she's a healthy 30. So you can imagine how how scrawny she was back then. Um, but yeah. Uh, she seemed to be, I thought she was a whippet. She was so skinny. And I found that she was like really athletic and really liked to be outdoors. So I started to take her on trips and introduced her to the canoe. And she just took to it very, very well. She really likes being outdoors. And um, uh, she's been become, like I said, pretty famous. Uh, she's a, such a sweet dog that she um, greets people and meets people and just shows them what to do in the outdoors. And couldn't ask for a better paddling partner, really. Hmm. Eh? Cool. She actually looks forward to getting out there, does she? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, actually with this whole, you know, COVID thing, um, I, I discovered that um, we, uh, like we were joking earlier about uh, how my lifestyle, because being an introvert and all that, um, it hasn't really changed much, but um, I've discovered um, that she's really missing the socialization, like the people that we meet on the walks that she can't go see, the other dogs, those kinds of things. So she's uh, she's really quite a social dog, and she uh, is very sweet, and everybody loves her. So, you know, hopefully we can get back out there and let her meet people again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she's not alone in feeling that way. I, could, I yeah. couldn't express that enough. Uh, just really quick here before we get on, I just want to make sure uh, my StreamYard seems to be showing a bit of uh, issues with actually putting comments on. Can everybody in the chat, can you hear us and see us okay? Just put a number one if everything's okay on uh, your viewing end there. And that'll tell me a lot, right? Uh, yeah, so when, when you got Nancy, did you have a hard time breaking her into canoeing? Or, you know, how, how did you have to go about training her? Uh, well, luckily, and usually what I tell pe a lot of people in the beginning is, like, uh, a lot of the obedience training that you, you do um, will help you and can be quite crucial when you when you get out there. Like things like stay, relax, um, um, uh, something called mat stays, um, and of course recall. You know, come when you're called uh, can be right. super important and that kind of thing. So she didn't take to the canoe like immediately. She was a little frightened of it. Um, so what I wound up doing was I, I kind of have a method of just like just go with it make sure it's not a big deal, but really be super conscious about um, making sure it's a positive experience. So you don't want to like force them in the canoe. You don't also want to go, oh, are you scared? Are you scared? You know, somewhere very, very in the middle of that and just like go and check it out. And if you make your make your canoe nice and comfy and they've got a spot to sit on there um, and um, they can be comfortable themselves, they're not worried about falling out, um, they, they can then start to relax and they'll look around um, but um, I think portaging is one of the best things that you can do out there because what you're doing is you're getting in the in the in the canoe, you paddle for a little bit, 
and they get kind of used to it. And then they get a reward because you get to the portage and they get to run around a little bit, get a little tired, tired dogs, always a good dog. Um, and then you're back in the canoe and then you keep doing that. And then you introduce, ideally, if you found somewhere where you paddle, you know, 10 minutes, portage, maybe 20 minutes, then portage, you know, and, and stuff like that, you're really going to get um, them uh, habituated to uh, the canoe and everything. And what she really loves the portage is she loves the running around and she very, very quickly associated being in the canoe with freedom, running around, exercise, sniffing, rolling and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and all that. So, you know, at first, at least uh, the, the canoe became a, a means to uh, get that reward. And then later it became like, OK, well, I'm going to nap in between and things like that. So, yeah, um, it was a, a slow but, uh, you know, determined, calm process. Right. And how about you, Kevin? Your uh, your dog obviously has been on a few trips with you, too, and you've had many dogs over the years. Yeah, it's my third dog, actually. And uh, it's really important, like what Preston is saying, is like make sure the, the first – it's like a child, too. Make sure the first canoe experience is very, very positive or it's it's done. Like um, the, the dog will hate the canoe. Uh, it's full of anxiety, right? And all it depends on the breed too. Like um, every dog's a dog, right? And every, even, not even the breed. Like I've had breeds that are supposed to just love the wilderness and not, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the first time um, uh, I had Angel out, I just, she was a pup, made sure it was a very positive experience. But she's also a Border Collie Golden Retriever mix. And so, you know, when she gets in trouble and, and eats things she's not supposed to, that's the Golden Retriever part but the border collie is challenging too because she thinks you're a sheep so um when i brought her as a pup uh it just became like okay like this is what the herd does and this yeah. is your job and uh yeah so i i and, and the reason why my dog's not i'm not, I'm not knocking a, a Preston's dog i think it's amazing and i'm knocking any other dog too but my dog doesn't the reason why she won't come up here she's not allowed up right my dog wants me to tell it what to do and and on a canoe trip the dog feeds off that especially a board, mm -hmm. a board collie so she's not allowed to be on a couch she's not allowed to be on on the chair it's just that's what i do like uh, and the dog feeds off that i could run my dog all day on the portage but if i don't actually exercise her brain she's done yeah. so um that, that's why right now she's like uh kevin I'm not supposed to be doing this. What's going on? Um, so yeah, it's just a different, different breed and different. But sorry, I'm babbling on again. Uh, I no, don't know. Way too much. But the uh, the one thing about it is that yeah, going back to what Preston said, it's like the very first experience is like a child. Make sure they have a positive experience. And I find a dog's worse than a child. If the dog has a negative experience the first time it's on a canoe trip, it takes months or even never for it to want to go back. Mm. Yeah. So, fellas, I just want to let you know, because I am having a bit of glitch going on here with StreamYard. I'm trying to read comments on the other side here on my other computer. Yeah, I can't. So I can actually ask questions, too. Okay? Yeah, so I can't we'll make it on screen right now, uh, Dennis. Yeah, I don't see them either. Uh, I just thought nobody was asking anything. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just that it's not coming up on the uh, the chat, so I'll, uh, I'll ask. So if anybody has uh, questions and they're popping up in the chat, just bear with me because I do have to get to them there, so that's cool. What's um, the next outfit you have on, Preston? Why, thank you. Yes. Can yeah. you turn it up and show us the back side of it? Can I Ari Rosen just asked, did I not get the memo about the dinner jackets? And it's like, no, nobody no, no, this is about special. anything, Ari. So. Stand up and show it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you see that? Maybe. Now go to, your, go to your left a little bit. There we go. There we go. That's what we're talking about. Yep. That's <laughs> what we're talking about. Yep. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hey, what happens on Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show stays on Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, right? <laughs> That's funny. So, so, Ken, what you were alluding to there with, like, you know, the breed of your dog, say, for instance, I guess we could even talk a bit about that is some dogs will be more apt to taking to, say, canoeing uh, a lot easier than other certain breeds of dogs that might not like water. Well, right. yeah, but then that, that's the reverse in one sense. My first dog was a Springer Spaniel, uh, Bailey, and she loved the water. She was fantastic, uh, really hyper in, in the boat. Uh, <laughs> and we won't go there, but does the dog resemble the owner? Like, we don't go there. But but uh, my second dog was a Springer Spaniel as well, and yet I 
threw her in the water. Well, she was a re rescue dog, so she was older when I got her. But I threw her in the water in the rapids um, my first trip with her, thinking she just went to shore while I'm you know, lining up the rapids. And she sunk like a rock. And she looked at me like, what is your problem? Why did you do that? And ever since after that, I had to put a life jacket on her all the time. She hated the water. I had to really you know, very cautiously put her in the canoe because of that one moment, the first time mm -hmm. I had her out. And I just assumed this Springer Spaniel, I mean, it's like a husky not liking the cold. It, yeah. it's, it, it's like a golden retriever not retrieving. So you never know, right? Yeah, yeah. So we got a question here from, uh, what's that? Tip of Canoe 21. He's asking, do you let your dog out of the canoe before you get out or make them wait until you're out of the boat? <laughs> Preston? If, well, yeah, it, Nancy has this really unique talent to start to jump out of the canoe just at the most inconvenient time. Like, you know, that moment where you, you got to do the little balance, you know, and you've got it there. That's when she decides to jump. Um, ideally, if I, again, like Nancy's, she's um, 16 years old now. Um, so, and 17 in June, um, we think. Uh, so it's kind of one of those like old dogs, new tricks kind of thing. I do my best and we work on certain things, but, um, uh, in the beginning, she was pretty afraid to jump out of the canoe and which was unusual cause she's so athletic. She's, she, she used to jump over my, my backyard fence it was so inconvenient, <laughs> but like a six foot fence, she'd just hop it and it was outrageous. And the neighbors thought it was hilarious. So they used to try to get her to do it, but I couldn't get her to jump out of the canoe. Um, you know, again, it was just like, you know, a little apprehension, a little being a, a little frightened of what was going on and stuff like that. But when she gets like kind of a, oh, okay, so we're going to go run around now, she'll just jump. And of course that pushes the canoe a little bit too. So it's kind of my fault in the sense that I was trying to train her to jump mm -hmm. out. And then, and now it's like, you know, usually it's really, it's, it's fine. Um, but a typical, um, like a, an easy portage to get on and off, she, you know, I, I stabilize the boat. I say, okay, go on. And then uh, she hops off and, and uh, then I'm able to, to get out and unpack and everything like that. But every now and again, she'll, she'll be a little uh, apprehensive and she doesn't want to do it. So it's like, okay, well, I'll get out first. And then I got one foot out of the canoe and then jumps. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. do that split. <laughs> So yeah. um, I would I I think I think the answer to that question, regardless of how successful I've been at it, would be to try to get um, like the control, like what Kevin was saying, like the uh, outline your expectations. So um, try to do things, and I'd imagine this is the same with kids too. Like try to do things as consistently as possible. So if that's going to be your routine, you know, uh, stop the canoe, have them get out, or stop the canoe, have them wait, and you get out, and then, then do that. Personally, I find it more convenient if she's just out of the canoe um, because then the canoe's a lot more stable with her out of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, um, so, so animals feed off your anxiety too, so, yeah. uh, and they, that, they react from that. So what I've done for all my dogs, um, and Angel is really good at this, so I glue uh, uh, one of those foam mats in my canoe, and if I'm doing rapids or I'm going to the portage, my command is what, 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 what was that? All right. <laughs> what? I didn't, I didn't expect that to be so loud. It was. That's okay. Cheers, Preston. Thank you. Cheers, Kevin. What are you Cheers, drinking? Everybody in the live. I'm I'm drinking some scotch and soda. That was the soda. Whoa! Wait! Wait a minute! Forget the whole dog talk like you're having soda with scotch what the hell is wrong with you new topic for a future show there you go Our oh, yeah. Yeah, what, what, what 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 do you mean like, like are you talking you're talking like single malt scotch no no just some like uh generic scotch and soda with lime i didn't really want to to <laughs> i didn't think i'd get caught nobody would notice <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, anyways, Kevin, back to what you were talking about, the mat. Right, I do have mat mat one of the mat. mats. It really does work. Well, I, sh I shouldn't say that. It works. It, it's always worked for my dogs, especially for Angel because the border collar in her. 
So there's a mat in the canoe. And when I get down to some rapids and I don't want the dog going back and forth because my dog's really hyper, right? Like, because again, like the owner is always matching the, the dog. I'll just say, go to the mat. And that gives yeah. her purpose, right? Because her brain is always working. Go to the mat. And she goes to the mat. When I get to the to the portage, if you know, if it's not not a big issue, Pre Press is right too. I want the dog out of the canoe so I can just not deal with it. But if there's a really bad like portage right before a waterfall, I don't want the dog doing that. So I say go, go to the mat. And it all depends on the breed and the dog too. My dog feeds off that. My dog wants me to tell it what to do. So it's like, okay, Kevin, I really want to go. Like, I really, but um, so I, that's what I do. But the mat makes a huge difference because as soon as I say go to the mat, it gives it a purpose of where to go. Yeah. So my my dog's the same way. It, it all depends, I, I guess, on each landing situation too, right? If you're if you're landing up onto a nice beach or a really nice you know uh, land, landing site there. If the dog wants to jump out and run, let her jump out and run, right? And that, that's my thinking. Um, but if it's in a situation where it's going to be unstable, all I do is tell her, sit, and she sits, right? Mm -hmm. So she's a very obedient dog when it comes to that. And then she'll go on my command, okay, go, and off she goes, right? She, then she's into the bush. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a comment here, a question from a backcountry paddler asking, do you guys use any kind of mat to put down for your dog inside the canoe, both to give them something to grip on or lay on? Uh, yeah. Also protecting your boat. Yeah, Kevin, you already way. mentioned that you you glue a, a mat inside, which is a good thing. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, to follow up on what uh, Kevin was saying too, like mat training, uh, if you've done that in obedience, what you're basically doing is trying to train them to stay on a particular mat. And the one that I, that we started off in in obedience class, I still take camping. Um, because she's really, really trained to do that. And that's how I got her to stay in a particular spot in the canoe. But I also bring it with me for uh, like at the campsite as well, not only for some insulation and comfort for her um, when it's cold, especially, um, but um, it, it also keep her in that same spot. So uh, the idea of like the mat, you can bring it anywhere, but she has to sit in the mat kind of thing. And if you train them well enough, um, then they will do that no matter what. So in the car, in the canoe, in the tent, or even at the campsite, if, if you're having trouble with the dog running around too much or you need them to settle and things like that, just follow through on your mat training. Um, but one of the, um, and again, further what uh, Kevin was saying, um, having a comfortable spot on the canoe where they feel uh, safe and stable is really important too, because it can be very uncomfortable on the bottom of the canoe. And uh, <laughs> there's Angel. Very active tonight. Yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. um, but yeah, the, the, we forget sometimes that the bottom of the canoe can be quite uncomfortable. Like it can be very hot, sandy. So it's, you mm -hmm. know, um, and so we ask the dog to lie down and they're telling you that they're uncomfortable. And we keep doing that, and you know, it breaks the trust kind of thing. So it's yeah. much easier to just have um, something there. And fortunately, I bought a, um, a bag a few years ago from Cook Custom Sewing, which has got a, uh, it's an insulated bag. It's supposed to be a kitchen bag. And I found it was best just to have with me um, because it was so comfy, she can lie on top of it. And uh, because of the insulation, she just lied right on top of it. So I packed the canoes. Um, and she just lies right on top of that one bag and it's the perfect bag for her. Um, uh, and she's always comfy. She can, she can see because a lot of dogs they'll want to see. So they'll, they'll get to the highest point. That's what Nancy does. Um, even when it's uncomfortable, she used to hop on top of my barrel even and start to roll it, which made every, <laughs> everyone nervous. Um, so I just found that if she has a nice comfy spot that she's used to, to being on, she, she can nap. You know, and she's perfectly comfortable doing that. So yeah. set them up for success, right? Yeah. yeah. The thing that I usually have for my dog, Molly, who is the dog on the thumbnail for this show, uh, you can see right underneath her, she's got her own little fleece blanket that I bring along. And if yeah. it, she's going to be laying on the bare canoe floor. That's uh, that's what I'll put down for her. So she's got yeah. something to sort of cuddle into, right? But uh, when we do our, our lengthy trips and the canoes are packed to the hilt, uh, I've got my dog, Molly, in front of me, sitting on the backpack in front of me. And then uh, my buddy Jay's got his dog, which is a uh, 
Australian blue healer sitting behind him on his backpack, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got the two dogs sitting high and dry type of thing, right? Yeah. His dog doesn't matter. You get to shore, that dog's doing a Superman dive out of the canoe, right? <laughs> and Molly will sit there and wait until we at least land, and then I've given her the command to go. So every yeah. dog's different. You got to train your dog basically the way you want to train your dog. Yes. For that. If, yeah, if your dog's good. obedient, they're gonna they're gonna go with what you tell them to do. Yeah. I, I, I I never blame the dog. I blame the owner. So yeah. if, something, if something happens on the trail or the campsite, um, or you know you put your tent on top of poop because of the dog that. You don't blame the dog. Uh, you blame the, the owner that actually has allowed that to happen. And yep. some people would be really offended by me saying that, but that's me. Uh, my my dog, uh, I, I again, the, the dog, I've dealt with animals all my life, in fish and wildlife and stuff like that. A dog's a dog. It's not a human. Um, and actually, it wants you to tell it what to do. It's a, it's, it's a, a, um, a pack animal. Mm -hmm. So the moment you actually – get the dog to realize that it's not the dominant and it will at one point in its life try to become the dominant of the path but then you've got to switch that but then once that happens everything becomes all bliss and my dog loves being in the bush with me and it actually loves me to tell it what to do and it wants to work uh, on the trip that's yeah. the one thing that everybody should know out there the dog is not just your companion to, to walk with you put the pack on it give it a job, uh, tell it what to do, and then give it a treat. Or not. Like Some people do a treat thing or, or, or whatever. I, I do the treat thing. But the dog loves that. It, it actually – and it will sleep all night after, after you've done that. Like, But to have the dog walk across the portage while you're carrying its kibble makes no sense whatsoever. The yeah. dog must carry its own food. Yeah. And, yeah. and the dog wants to do that. It's not that the dog's like – I mean, I know Preston. I've, I've tripped with him. He doesn't want to do it. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I think his dog carries more stuff than he does. Yeah. 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 Sorry. That's all right. I, I, I got to get Mo, uh, Molly to carry more stuff because I, I haven't got a, a pack for her. Usually oh, she wears really? her, her life yeah. jacket, but, you know. Yeah. Well, okay, so we're going we're gonna to pump on to the, uh, the next topic here, which is uh, the controversial one, leash or no leash. Oh, already? Oh my yeah, God. well, we're at like 7.30, so we, we put a half an hour, well, 20 minutes into, uh, into training. Uh, we could always discuss more in overtime, a little more about uh, whatever, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, so we're not talking too much. Just, just tell me to be quiet. I, I, I blabble on. Ah, no, yeah, that's what we're all here for. We're all, we're all going on, so that's all good stuff. Oh. Um, yeah, so leash or no leash? You want, you want me to start that? Uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Forget what we're You just fed your dog what? Pepperettes. And then you ate it. So pepperettes. I just cut it with my teeth. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 have, I have a take on it. I know I know certain places you go to. Algonquin, you're required yeah. to leash your dog. So, uh, here, yeah, I, so here's I, the thing. Like you have to – like in in, in – in theory and practice, you have to have your dog on a leash, right? Any time you're on a park. And I would say that I support that rule 100%. And um, we should all have dogs on leashes. Um, that set, and for a lot of reasons, right? Like uh, for the dog's protection, for your protection, for other people's dogs' protections, for other people, you know, that kind of stuff. That said, Nancy is barely ever on a leash once we're in, a, in an area of the park where it's uh, understood that we're not going to be running into a few people. And to go back to uh, Kevin's point, like I, um, it's not the dog's fault. It's your fault. So when my dog disrupts someone else's time, it is my fault. And that is on me. Absolutely. And I try to make as best a judgment call as possible. And, and based on the dog, based on where we are, you know, Nancy's a super sweet dog. I know she's not really, I'm um, going to cause too much trouble. She's very fast, um, <laughs> um, but she comes and like her recall is really, really solid. And so I'm confident taking kind of a risk with that. But having said that, I know other people and I've tripped with other people where it's been disruptive, even just her running around with their dogs. Um, they're, you know, excited and wanting to be off leash and, and all this kind of stuff. And I have got into trouble and she, it, it's it's awful because she she does, seems to find like if there's I remember one particular on uh, Nelly Lake 
there was um, this group of, of older ladies um, out there having fun by themselves and, and around the corner comes running this dog off leash and five of them bent down and were like, oh my God, look at this cute dog. And then the sixth was just standing there and you could see the look on her face go, oh, oh, I don't want this dog. And of course she goes right for that one, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, we kind of have to avoid that. And I know there's a lot of people who are like, no, dogs should be free. And others, others are like, no, they always have to be leashed. And I'm, I like, I'm, I'm, uh, I support the rules. I, 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 I would recommend following them completely, but, um, and I'm not special. I shouldn't be breaking the rules, but, uh, Every now and again, um, when Nancy's like coming up to people and greeting them and they're having a great time with her and, and, and having that opportunity, I, I don't feel as bad breaking the rules, um, if that makes sense. So that's kind of a really wishy-washy answer, of course. But That's what I said. This is going to be controversial because, yeah. everybody, you know, a lot of times there, again, has to depend on the dog. You know, is your dog a, yeah. a dog that's going to take off and run and chase everything? Is it a dog that's a healer type of dog that's going to stay behind you or, or just in front of you guiding? Yeah. It has a lot to do with the personality of the dog and, I would say, yeah. also, Part and the owner, and the owner because unfortunately, like I, I know a, an owner of a pit bull who loves to ru let his, his dogs run run loose at the park around my house too, and he thinks they're really good off leash, but they're not, right? So I mean, that's one of the things. Like someone out there could be like nodding their head and very very angrily right now, having experienced Nancy off leash, because I'm thinking she's really good off leash, but Nancy like you know, might've tried to hug them or something like that. And they don't like that. And, and, you know, so you really have to be honest with yourself too there. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it does boil down to the owner and training and recall and just, you know, making your dog a really good citizen out there is so important. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. I, I think that I, the one rule that I follow is, um, um, uh, I just assume everybody I'm going to meet on the portage is not a dog owner. Because dog owners have this uh, idea, which is a good idea, that everybody loves dogs. Yeah. And, and so when the dog is loose and the dog runs up to someone, and I know my dog is not going to do anything to anybody, but they don't know that. Right? And if and, they, and also, if they don't like dogs, it is their right to say, put your dog on a leash because it's the law. It, they, it is their right to do that. So absolutely. So two things I do. One is if I go to a busy area, uh, I do I, well, a few things. I put a bandana, red bandana on my dog because it's black. So if she is loose and she meets up someone, like they don't think she's a bear, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's another one I never right? thought of. Because if you saw a black object coming towards you on the portage, oh my God. Yeah. I also put a, I also put a bell on her um, so you can hear her. I can hear where she is or other people know that's a dog. It's, there's a bell on it. And the other is... Um, I only take her off the leash when I'm in uh, a non-operating park or crown land where I'm pretty sure I'm not going to meet anybody because going to Preston's thing, it's like the dog has to run. Like, yeah. like really. So if I'm going to take my dog on a trip, it's not going to be on the canoe lake circuit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I, I, cause I've had issues too. When you, when uh, Preston says, you know, it's all the owner's fault too. And that's true. But some owners don't realize that. They think what they're doing is perfect. I've had a dog go right through my pack and eat every single chocobar out of my food pack while it was on the portage. Uh -huh. And I went to look at the dog and looked at the owners, and the dog owners thought it was cute that the dog did that. I was on a 20-day trip, and I was on day 12. I was about to strangle all of them. <laughs> and the other one was I was on a uh, non-operating part, uh, part two, and I had my dog off the leash, and my buddies were with me. You know, and, and actually it was Ellie, and she's an old dog too, and she doesn't didn't do much of anything. She was all crippled basically most of her life. And this other dog came up and bit her and drew blood. So I actually kicked the dog in the head, and like because the dog literally had my dog by the throat, and I kicked the dog. And and this woman came up to me, and she went nuts on me, saying, "How dare you kick my dog?" I went, uh, "Sorry, your dog just bit mine and drew blood. Like, what do you want me to do?" And then she said, "And Preston, you you find this funny? Oh, you're the happy camper." <laughs> not right now i'm not no, that's, that's only the dog. And she's all excited to meet me and my buddies are laughing their buns off because watch kevin not become the happy camper and i went eight nuts on that person i said she and she goes well your dog's not on the leash i went 
my dog doesn't go and bite other dogs' throats, right? Yeah. So, so I, what, what is the answer? In a very busy area, abide by the rules. If you don't abide by the rules, go to a place where there's no other people around so you can let your dog free. And also put some device on it to warn other people that the dog's coming. Yeah, that's a great point, too, because she's um, like anytime we're traveling, um, she whether we're in the canoe or on the portage, she's got her life jacket on and it's a bright yellow white uh, uh, life jacket. And that, like you said, that is a great indicator to say this is not a, a wild animal. Um, here she is. She's coming. You can see her. But uh, there's an effect with that dog in that in that life jacket being that cute. I've, it's very very disarming as well, right? Um, so there's there's that part of it. She doesn't look dangerous, and you know, again, that doesn't solve any problems, but it's certainly helpful um, to that. <laughs> I'm going to read just a couple of comments here that were sure. actually in the uh, the live chat. I'm very uh, curious about the comments. Yeah, I can't well, one, one person says, "I say leash." Hubby uh, has been attacked three times, once almost needing stitches. Yeah. Our good friend Mike Burns says, "Yes, my dog Willow stays on point on the portage with a pack on, and no leash on. Uh, she has taken me down once crossing a creek on a leash, and that's one one concern I always have about having a dog on a leash on a portage is trying to ma manage a leash, manage your canoe over your head, yeah. holding something else in your hand." Yeah. And, you know, not getting tripped up by the dog. The dog decides to go around the wrong side of a tree. And before you know it, you're all tangled. Yeah. Like I say, this is controversial. I, I think a lot of times it has, you, yeah. have to, you have to, you have to go situation by situation in some cases, right? It's, yeah. it's like my mom, my mom, my 86 year old Scottish mother, it, 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 she brings it back all the time. She's like, just didn't be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really like, like if if I'm going on a solo trip with my dog, I'm not going to go to Algonquin because I'm I'm not going to solo pack a, a, a canoe, a pack, and the dog on a leash. Yep. I'm not going to do that. So I just don't do that trip. I go somewhere else where I don't have that issue. Just then it's stupid. Yeah. Well, Here's well, another one too. Uh, Dan Dan Schultz outdoors says I'd love uh, I'd love to do no leash, but my dog is not there yet. Nobody portaging a canoe wants a dog jumping on him, which is yeah. true too, right? Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, you got to kind of take that, like to play devil's advocate there for a moment too. Like if you can't handle the, the portage with the dog on a leash and stuff like that, then maybe that's not, maybe you're not carrying things properly. Maybe you shouldn't bring the dog. It's okay. Go on. It's okay. You know, that kind of thing, right? Like you should be able to, to manage that situation a little better as well. Right. Like, yeah. So some some, do some dogs are, I, I think, just not an issue, right? Because they are very obedient. They they're glued to their their owner's hip, and then some dogs, for lack of a different term, they're dum dums. Yep. Right. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I've got a friend that's got a dog that that dog just looks at you with a glazed look on in his eyes and does not want to do what he's told to do. Right. So that yeah. kind of a dog has to stay on a leash, obviously, all the time. Right. Yep. Uh, I'm not saying my dog is perfect, but like my dog, a vast majority of the time will be off a leash. Now, if anybody watched my last video at Algonquin Park, we hiked back Bat Lake Trail. For part of the, the the hike, I had her on leash. and For part of it, I had her off leash. Yeah. Right. So I, I weighed the situation. If I heard people coming, boom, instant key. Molly, get over here. And Molly would come to my side and I'd sit down or like hold her by my side or put the leash on her. And then when the people were clear, then I would let her off again. And then she, she's fine. She's like, you know, doing her thing. Right? The other thing too, I, I mean, that needs to be said as well is that um, off, oftentimes the, the leash is um, like a, a significant safety thing for the, the dog itself, right? And yourself. Um, and I'm thinking in particular about bears um, because they have a tendency to run at the bear, bark at the bear. And then when something happens, they run back to the owner. And now you've, your dog's brought this angry bear at you, you know, kind of thing. And uh, um, I had a dog when I was, a, I was a kid who would go out and find, like, I don't know how she found it, but she'd find porcupines. She would find skunks and just be like, get into so much trouble and stuff like that. Um, Nancy's actually really good about bears. She is very, very angry. Like she's angry at the thought of them. Um, even fake ones now. <laughs> Did I tell you about that? Yeah, when we go into the, 
Yeah, so we had a couple of experiences with bears. So she she sees that they're real, and um, uh, you know, she again the recall that was the key in that that moment, right? So um, I bring her, I, <laughs> I got her to uh, come back and stuff like that. No big deal. Um, but ever since we had, we've had about three or four bear camp. Uh, encounters, um, some of them a little closer than others. But now, whenever we go into Algonquin uh, or the Portage store in Algonquin, there's a, they let you bring your dog in, and uh, there's a, um, a bear outside, and she gets really, really angry at it, and just it's so frightened. And uh, in the Algonquin Outfitters on Ox Tongue, they have a bear inside the store, and when we go in there, she just sits there and growls at it, and growls at it. <laughs> Everybody thinks it's funny, but yeah, 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 yeah. And it, that, that brings into another thing too: is like, say, for instance, on a portage, dog on dog encounters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You don't know who's coming up the other end of the the portage, coming at you with perhaps a big dog that might be aggressive towards other dogs, yeah. or might uh, you know, just yeah, you know what I mean, or be yeah. surprised yeah. by by another dog coming at him too at the same point. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one too because even on the dog park, right? Too like if I have my dog on the leash, sometimes it's worse because they get defensive yeah. on the leash, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What I would suggest too is uh, get a dog whistle, like a, a, you get the dog store, like it's, it's yeah. a whistle that is high pitched, and train your dog on that, and that helps a lot on all trips, no matter what. So on the portage, blow the whistle, my dog comes right back on command. And uh, at the campsite, because at night she has to go off for a poo and pee in the black woods, woods because I trained her not to poo on the campsite. And of course, I put so I put a little reflective uh, thing on her at least so it's flashing, so I know where she is. Uh, you can get that at, at any store, and also I do the dog whistle, and she comes right back. So yeah. train her on that, and and actually, I, like again, it all depends on the breed, the owner, or whatever. But I found of all my dogs. You give it a reason and you train it. The dog wants you to do that. So yeah. I blow the whistle, and it's not a it's not a whistle on your PFD. It's a dog whistle. It's a high pitch whistle. And Angel, I, I, it's funny, Dennis. I tried to find all my summer stuff today for you, and I was like, it's all chaotic here. I don't know where you're at. Uh, but if I blew the whistle right now, she'd be right at my side, just sitting there looking at me. Right. So that's a really good thing to buy. Really cheap. I, I have it. You yeah, actually see in my videos. I actually have it on, on me all the time with my. Uh, fire seal and my own whistle. Hmm. Very cool, yeah. Very good. So yeah. I guess uh, there's no correct answer for this. Uh, play it by ear and yeah. do your thing and hope you don't pee anybody off, right? That would be stupid. Yeah. Just, stand right. stand like, yeah. just, like, just have a, you got to have control over your dog at all times. That's, uh, I think, yeah. that the best way to put it. If you have control yeah. over your dog at all times, you're going to be, you're going to fare out best, right? Whether they're a leash or not. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or control over yourself because you control the dog. Yeah. Okay. That that's a that's a that's another topic for another show. <laughs> How's your scotch and soda crap going on there, Preston? Like, don't feed that to the dog. No, it's not, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Oh, I could have told you that. Scotch and water. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So um, this <laughs> this should be a really quick one. Sleeping accommodations for your dog. Yeah, well, that we kind of touched on it as well too. Like, you want, um, you definitely want them off the ground in the cold weather, because um, again, that we forget about that. We think of them as dogs. You, you got to know your breed, right? Some dogs. Um, a, a dog I had, he was a Norwegian Buhan, and he was the biggest jerk when it came to, uh, um, uh, you know, sharing accommodations. And um, it was a May 2-4 weekend, and we were out there, and it started snowing. It's one of those ones. Of course, two days later, it was like 30 degrees, but it's snowing. I'm freezing. I'm in this this sleeping bag, just shivering, trying to stay stay warm. And I, I say, well, where's that dog? We should be, like, you know, um, uh, 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 sharing body heat and, and um, you know, is he okay and stuff. And I look, and he's at the furthest end of the tent way in the corner just like sprayed out like this because he was like too too hot you know and stuff like that so i mean that dog might not need you know the accommodations that someone else does but nancy definitely needs something off the ground um i have that mat that i bring and i've even got um this has really worked out too is i bought a sleeping bag that has a detachable hood um and i, I don't really like the hoods and stuff 
and I, I, it was pretty cold the one time, and uh, she doesn't like to cuddle for some reason. That's another story. But I, um, <laughs> okay, you want to hear that story? All right. No, no, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I have this, the hood of this <laughs> bag and it fits over top of her really, really nicely. Like she curls right up and it, it, it it's there. So uh, that, that it has become her sleeping bag. Oh, geez, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I never have uh, problems with the sleeping thing for my dog. Uh, don't have to bring too much special for her. Like I say, besides her little blanket there, but, yeah. uh, I'm a hammock sleeper. I, I, I camp in a hammock and oh, got her train that uh, I get myself in there all cozy and comfy. I hold the zipper open and she comes flying in like Superman and just kind of like lands yeah. right in the proper position. That's and, you know, yeah. and she doesn't, she doesn't move until the morning time. So that's, that's uh, you know. I, I never thought because I like hammock camping, but I'd never thought my dog was sleeping in the hammock. So that's good. To know. That's the only time I got Nancy to, to cuddle. Like she'd, she'd sleep on my shoulder cause she had no other choice. Yeah, yeah. I've actually got a few of my YouTube videos there uh, on on various trips there. The morning scene, eh? You always do the morning scene, and she's always got her head right here on the shoulder, and she'll yeah. like look over me and just like give me the old dog kiss on the cheek or something, right? She's happy. Oh, yeah. Just like yeah, to right. tell everybody out there, it is against the law across every province of Canada and probably most states in the United States not to have sex with your dog. Everybody knows that, right? Yes, yes. There you go. Valuable lesson for everybody in the chat. Oh, yes. <laughs> none of that. None of that. That's legal. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you do for your dog, Kevin? Um, it does depend on the breed too. Like, uh, so um, yeah. So I, I make a I make a bed for Angel and my for mother two dogs too. I do bring a mini mat for it. Um, in the tent. Um, sometimes it's the same mat that's in the canoe. It depends if I if I blew the mad in the canoe or whatever and in cold weather i do have a uh a, a, a dog jacket for it uh, and also uh a, a mini um sling, sling bag for it um my partner christine her dog is smaller like like your dog Preston, and gets cold like like that like mm -hmm. and so it, it gets a, i think it gets more comfort than we do so I got to tell you though, I remember uh, last fall at uh, Barron Canyon, we went out and we were going to bring the hot tent, but it wasn't going to be that cold. So we brought the regular tent and then it really did get cold. And the dog was literally shivering. And, and my dog was like, What's your problem? And it's really funny to watch the two dogs together. My dog is like, What is your problem? Like, are you a bush dog or not? Like, what's, what is what is going on? And this dog was like, Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And so, so I felt bad for the dog. And I put it inside my sleeping bag to get warm, and it did. It, it really did. It, it, the dog was really was, uh, great. But then about two hours later, I woke up and wanted to check on the dog, uh, um, Oliver, to see if Oliver was fine. And the dog wasn't moving. I was like, uh oh <laughs> So I poked the dog, and the dog didn't move. I went, this is a bad way to end the relationship, but I just killed her dog. I suffocated it in my sleeping bag. Oh, my God. And I actually picked it up like a like a pig and slapped its butt to see if it was alive, and it didn't move. And then she woke up and said, "Is everything all right?" I went, "Yeah, yeah, everything's fine." <laughs> and finally, I put it back in the sleeping bag, thinking, "Well, I'll have to explain to her that I killed her dog." And then the dog woke up and looked at me like, "What's your problem?" I was just having a good good nap. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, it was terrifying. All in sleep. <laughs> terrifying. We we had that in my uh, my latest adventure here before they closed the parks. Went up winter camp and a friend of my friend of mine and myself, and we brought Molly with us. And I brought her her own down filled sleeping bag. And at nighttime, we got the one scene there. Woke up in the morning and I pulled the, the the sleeping bag back. She was like just right under there and warm as can be, no shivering, no nothing. It's like, why are you bothering me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but make sure you take care of your dogs out there. Like, don't think they're just yeah. dogs on, on trip. Like, make sure you you bring your a, a sleeping mat for it, uh, so it's comfortable. But other dogs too. I know other other owners like with huskies. They don't let their dogs sleep in the tent with them because the husky is fine outdoors. Like, uh, like Jim Baird's dog. Like, yeah, I don't. I I I I shouldn't know. I 
I shouldn't answer that because I don't know, but I'm assuming he doesn't let his dog sleep in the tent with him. And uh, well, in the summertime, in the wintertime, I'm not sure. Jim might have to answer that, but it's a husky. I've known a lot that don't the 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 dogs stay up. Yeah, the, yeah. The up north thing. If you got a um, husky or whatever, yeah, they're out there sprawled out, just happy to be yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting comment here for you, Kevin, based on what you had said there. Uh, let's see here. And the sex with the dog thing? Alan Drummond says, uh, KC, happy camper. Sleeping with your dog is not illegal in 10 U.S. states. And I'm not telling you which ones. I'll let you Google that for yourself. Only Alan would actually know <laughs> that. Alan would know that. Yeah. <laughs> he, would, he would know those things. Thanks for that interesting tidbit there, Alan. That's awesome. Alan, get out of the house. Get a life, for God's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome okay uh we're getting close to eight o'clock we're, we're just going to touch on maybe that's some awesome. safety tips and then we're going to get into the swag giveaway and that special announcement that i had mentioned and then yeah. we'll finish off the topic on dogs because we're also going to talk about dog medical kits uh keeping your dog clean uh what to pack for your dog and things like that so there's a bit more uh, conversation's going really good on this. And I, hopefully everybody's learning something or, or taking something away from this. But uh, important safety tips for your dog. You got any? Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, one of the big things that I've noticed lately or that I've had to run into lately is, um, and this is going to sound a little strange, but expose your dog to, to bugs, uh, to bug bites. A lot of people that I've camped with over the years, it's like the first time the dog's been camping, the first time the dog's been up north, and they wind up getting like black fly season and getting bitten a lot, and all of a sudden their faces just swell up like they like ours do, right? And it becomes quite a panic. You don't know what to do and, and things like that. And um, uh, like a lot of that is just – and then they're fine. Like two days later, they're fine. Sometimes you have to medicate them. Sometimes you don't, just like us, right? Like sometimes we can just wait it out and that kind of thing. But it is, it can be kind of scary when they get a whole bunch of red little dots and their faces start to swell and they get a little lethargic and stuff. And uh, I've been told by vets that even just getting a couple of um, uh, mosquito bites, a couple of black fly bites, um, just gets their immunity going. And they're, it's not such a shock when you're out in the woods uh, on day four uh, when your dog's blown up like a balloon. Yeah. Well, there, there again, I, I found myself on canoe trips where I've taken Molly's little blanket and actually covered her with it so I can keep the, uh, the bugs off her. Cause you know, early in the evening or, you know, right at dusk there and she, uh, she wants to curl up and have a nap beside you and you look at her and she's like, just like constantly turning and biting yeah. mosquitoes or whatever. That Put something over top of them. Yeah. So co cover your dog up, leave just yeah. her nose out. And then she's just got to fend off with her nose with her tongue. Right. So that's, uh, yeah. Nancy, Nancy has become so smart and so conditioned. Um, I couldn't quite figure this out at first, but if the bugs were really bad, she would be um, like hanging out by the canoe. And even in, if the canoe's like sitting on the ground open, she would crawl into the canoe. And I thought like that doesn't offer any protection whatsoever. And then it finally dawned on me, we don't get bit when we're out in the canoe, when we're out paddling. And so she's associated safety from bugs with being in the canoe. So often when they're bad, she'll just like go sit in the canoe. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't help her, but uh, she's figuring, okay, let's get let's get on the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dog, uh, actually, all all three of my dogs with the angel, especially because she's black too, and black attracts uh, mm -hmm. bugs. Right. Yeah. As soon as we get to camp, well, first of all, I do not take my dog out on trips or backpacking trips in June. I just don't do it. It's wrong. The, the dogs get eaten alive. Yeah. Yes. So I just don't do it. I, there's no need to. I actually get a pet hotel for the dog and I go on a trip. And she's happy. Um, but during the other times, I bring um, the, uh, the bug shelter, Eureka bug shelter. And mm -hmm. my dog is hilarious. As soon as I get my pack out, she sits at the pack and she's, and my dog doesn't bark. She's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I'll get the bug shelter out and she'll lie on it. And she's basically telling me, get this thing yeah. up now. Like, are you are you stupid or not? Like, so so yeah, she she's conditioned to that. So that bug shelter, I'm not sure if you know about it, but Eureka has that the bug shelter. The bug free zone. Yeah, and to get the dog in there or or even get the tent up right away and get the dog in the tent. Yeah. It's just really warm in the tent, so I think the bug shelter is better. But just don't bring your, your dog on a trip in the beginning of June. It's just it's torture. Yep. No, I agree with that. 
We don't. Uh, she doesn't want to go in June at all, ever. Yeah, I don't no. want to go in June, but we have to. Even aside from the bugs, uh, a lot of people have been asking about ticks. We'll get into that when we talk about the uh, the medical kits and stuff like that, uh, because that is definitely something that we'll, we could talk about. But uh, as far as safety for your dogs, I know some dogs are fantastic swimmers. Some are not so much, but my dog is a great swimmer, and I still put a life jacket on her for a vast majority of the times. So if I got big water crossings, life jacket goes on. If we're solo... Life jacket goes on. Well, if, uh, there, are, there are humans who are great, fantastic swimmers too, right? Let, exactly. Um, but the reason why she wears, and I'm not saying uh, there are dogs who probably don't need it or whatever, but um, Nancy wears a life jacket for the same reason why I wear a life jacket. For and It's not that I can't swim, but um, surprises and um, when I need some extra help. Because if you're in the middle of a lake, it's one thing to be able to swim a whole lake. But it's the other uh, thing to be like have that thrust upon you when you're not necessarily ready for it, and whatever it is that tipped you in the first place, right? It's usually a surprise. If we all knew when the when the canoe was going to tip, then yeah, maybe we don't need life jackets. But well, we still do. But it's the same thing with the dogs, right? Like, why not give them that help? And anybody that's ever tried a, a dog PFD, the the. What Preston's saying is absolutely true. The other thing too is it's really easy to grab that back of the yeah. and pull that dog yeah. into, the, into the boat. It's really good. The other thing is too is like the, the, the dog is going to get overheated in the boat uh, because here we are with sunscreen on, a hat, sunglasses, and the dog is lying in the sun. So I actually uh, put a, um, a, a, a attachment on the side of my canoe so I can put one of those dollar store umbrellas up, and then the dog is lying under my umbrella. And when I don't need it, if it's rainy day or windy day, I use that umbrella for a sail. So it, it's an extra thing. Uh, and, um, you know, you just make sure that that dog gets a dip of water. Uh, like put it, I literally put it in the water to cool down when it's a heat wave. You imagine going across Lake Obiongo in a heat wave and that dog is sitting in the boat just lying there. Like I, think about it. But, you know, it, it's a dog. I get it. But it like, like care for your animal. So. Yeah, that's a good point too. For the same reason why you don't bring a dog out in June, probably not a great idea to bring a dog for like um, like a long, um, uh, uh, a big lake trip where you're not going to be taking too much rest, where you're going to be out on the water like forever, unless you can manage the dog like dipping it in and, and out. Maybe that's the trip that you leave the dog at home as well. <laughs> Funny question for you, Kevin. Oh, okay. the guy in a canoe wants to know: Does Ash's wife write his name on his dog like she does on his fishing lures? <laughs> <laughs> he he is lying, by the way. He he did not get his wife to write his names on his fishing lures. So just so you know, guys, I'll make it really quick. When I go fishing with Ashley, he's very competitive fishing, and actually, he likes Angel. He's not a dog owner though; he does not like dogs. So he's. I, and I respect that on trip. Um, uh, he's basically always looking at me like, like, what are you doing? Well, it's my dog. I and mean, he's not a dog owner, right? But the whole thing with the lures, um, we, we're very competitive for trope fishing. And we have certain lures that work where they work. And so he wrote his name on his. Uh, and, of course, he said his wife did it. But it's in his handwriting, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So the one biggest brook trout he's ever caught on, on uh, Big Trout Lake was on my lure. How did I know? It didn't have his name on it. Just saying. There you go. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're at 8 o'clock, which is usually when I do my swag giveaway. Oh, but uh, yeah. right after the swag giveaway, we have a big announcement that I wanted to make with uh, somebody else that's supposed to pop into the stream. They haven't popped into the bottom yet, so I'm just going to move on to the next topic then. Well, any more any more safety tips you think uh, – that you guys know of for dogs? Well, yeah, uh, find uh, what I, I tend to do if I go to a different area is, is know where your vets are going to be, right? Um, oftentimes as right you're time. driving, like you'll notice them, especially as dog owners. We're like, oh, yeah, that's the closest one as you're driving. Mm -hmm. But before you go, I mean, ideally you should know where they are. And um, uh, one in particular, like, uh, it's got to be really famous by this point is just outside of Huntsville on your way into um, – uh, or on your way to Algonquin, there's an animal hospital right there. I can't remember the name of it, but I mean, at least like, you know, okay, that's the spot I need to get to 
if um, if anything really goes wrong, you know, that, those kinds of things. But take a med kit. Um, uh, the, the and I guess we were going to talk about that anyway. But like, yeah. um, you want you want stuff for your dog. You want extra things for your dog. Um, that the, there you can buy a lot of specialized dog stuff. Um, you can buy specialized dog medicine, which is a, a really good idea. Um, lifesavers are that that dog tape. Um, because, um, like, unlike us, where if, if we need to use um, some kind of um, bandage or whatever, normally most of us, maybe not Kevin, but we, we're not going to go try to take that uh, bandage off with our, our teeth and stuff like that. Um, so wrapping it with, um, with that dog tape is, uh, it can be a lifesaver. Um, and if you can't find it, like electric tape. And uh, the other thing that I like to tell people, too, is try to get one of those, like, um, uh, like plungers, the needle plungers, so that you can um, give your dog medicine, like the liquid medicine. So your um, uh, just the plastic portion with the plunger, right? Yeah, yeah no needle, needle without needle. a needle. But like you can get them like for kids or whatever. But I see them at the at the pet stores as well, right? Because um, the the um, the the like if you're um, putting in the, or giving them like the the liquid aspirin. Or like Pepto Bismol, which sometimes you, you need for for that, or um, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide to induce vomiting uh, can be key, especially if you have a dog that likes to taste everything and try everything and eat them. Thankfully, I haven't had too much problem with that lately, but um, I've known a lot of dogs that just go when they find something and they got to eat it, and they're gonna, you know, and um, if you're like day four um, of a trip. And this this dog is just poisoned itself. That's that's kind of a lifesaver. The bonus is it also helps you um, if you mix it with water. You can get that skunk smell out as well on your dog or yourself. Um, so that can be kind of helpful as well. Hey Dennis, my my computer is crashing right now. So um, keep going. I'm gonna have to restart everything. Yeah, not a problem, Kevin. Not a problem. You hear me? I don't know why, but my everything's crashing right now. Okay, so uh, Preston, keep going. You're good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I, I got uh, Mike or sorry, if somebody. The guest is having trouble logging in here, so I'm just gonna go over really quick on the first aid kit. When Kevin gets back in, he could talk a bit about this. Now, Kevin Callen was kind enough to send me uh, an article that he had written for uh, one of the magazines that he writes for. Oh, yeah. And uh, in there had a really good extensive list of a first aid kit that he has put together for uh, for animals, right, for dogs. And he carries a separate first aid kit in, in, the, in this case, right? So basically, let's see here. Kevin's having difficulty. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to read the list off now. You don't have to go writing this down, everybody in the chat, because if you do send me an email to uh, canoehound at gmail.com, which is right here, I will gladly send you a PDF copy of this so that you can put together your own list. And I'll just really go through it really quickly here. He's got uh, first thing, ACE self-adhering athletic bandages, yep. cotton balls or Q-tips, uh, vet wrap bandage, uh, the kind used for dressing a horse's leg. You kind of touched on that yep. here. Uh, a sock, great for keeping a foot uh, bandage on. Uh, gauze sponges, liquid bandages, works great on patching mild cuts on the dog's pads. Antiseptic towelettes, hydrocortisone acetate, 1% cream. There you go, yeah. Uh, rubbing alcohol, eye rinse solution. That's a big one for my dog. She loves running through the bush, and she always cuts her eye. Yeah. So if you if you could pick up pre pick up meds for that for the dog's eyes, really handy to have. And a telltale sign if you see them out of nowhere, you know they're starting to get like a pussy look in the yeah. corner of their eye. You make sure you treat their eyes because it usually means that they scratch their eye. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Small container of Vaseline. Uh, oh yeah. Pardon? Yeah. yeah. A small container of vasil or uh, hydrogen peroxide, a good way to induce vomiting. Uh, Preston just touched on that. It says one to three teaspoons every 10 minutes until the dog vomits. I did not know that. I did not know that you could actually make a dog take that. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Benadryl, one to two tablets every eight hours for an average-sized dog. 
Pepto-Bismol tablets, one to two tablets every six hours for an average sized dog. Uh, buffered aspirin, not Tylenol or ibuprofen. Yeah. Advil, Nuprin, Motrin, et cetera, is toxic to a dog's liver, one to two tablets every four hours. So you're saying aspirin is a, the better thing? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, Kaopectate tablets. Wow, I haven't said that word in like 100 years. <laughs> Kaopectate tablets, one to two maximum strength tablets. Uh, Say it three times hours. fast. Uh, three times fast. Say it three times fast. Oh, I, I'm having a hard time saying it one time slow. Ready? Ready? Go. Kaopectate tablets. Kaopectate tablets. Kaopectate tablets. Okay, now I'm doing, doing this. <laughs> Next item <laughs> an emergency ice pack. That's one of the ones you have to crack, I'd imagine, to, to make them cold. Uh, an ear syringe. Antibiotic ointment, bandage scissors, tweezers, a tick key. A lot of people were talking about or asking about ticks. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, a tick key is very handy. And uh, I'll let you guys talk about tick medications and stuff like that while I try to get my other guest set into the live stream here. Uh, a blanket and the dog's health record and phone number of an or ordinary vet. Yeah. Or or trying to find the closest vet like uh, Preston. If anybody wants a copy of, the, of this list or a link to the article that uh, Kevin Callan had written, drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com and I'll gladly uh, send you a copy of that off. And while I'm at it, I'll also give you a copy of my uh, canoe trip packing list. Ooh. Gentlemen, talk, talk about some, uh, some ideas of, of what you would do for a dog to prevent ticks. You go first. I'm getting my scotch and soda. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, the the issue with ticks and Lyme disease and, and other gross stuff is the same with dogs as it is with humans, right? And you want to protect them. But they are not smart enough to avoid this. Well, they don't know to avoid the spot where the ticks are going to come from. And, you know, especially in the long grass, they love running through that. So your best bet is to just be constantly checking your dog for ticks. Give them a nice pat down. You'll feel it. It'll feel like, almost like a like a little scab um, that's just a little out of place. Um, and um, pat them down. Check all the spots. Um, you want to check just like us humans. You want to check those hot spots, like um, you know under the arm and around the neck. And in particular, if your dog is has spots like Nancy does. You want to check those dark spots. That's uh, anytime I've found um, ticks on on Nancy, it's always been like on her ears or on the the spots on her back because they'll just hide in those dark spots that are nice and warm and things like that. And it's the same as humans. You got to make sure you you uh, pull that tick out properly, right? You want to get it right at the at the base. Use your your tick key or whatever, and just make sure not to rip the head off. Pull it out. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, um, um, Kevin's got some stories about pulling ticks off, but uh, luckily, <laughs> luckily I've, I've always managed to be able to take the ticks off of Nancy. Um, but again, too, uh, they're going to come into the tent with you. They're going to sleep in your spots, too, so you want to check yourself as well. Like, yeah. you know, check the dog numerous times. They like it, right? You can give them a nice little scratch down and stuff, but check out all the spots. Um, even the embarrassing ones, but uh, don't 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 start with that. Don't do not. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, you know, the the one thing we we do with Molly, uh, and she sometimes she's got thick fur, sometimes she's got uh, like we have to shave her once in a while, right? Right. Yeah. And before we go on a trip, we try to to shave her down so that you know she doesn't get all all you know the, all the mats and stuff like that. But every night, uh, I, I just give her like a good rub down, you know, like you're just petting the dog. She loves it and everything. And that's when you're usually going to find a tick, right? Is you'll find like a lump that's not there, a little tiny thing. And having a tick key is very handy to do that. Uh, I'm not a fan of those those tick medications. Like I, who knows what's in those things, right? The, the, the big pill that you give them once a year, or that oil streak you put down their back. I, I don't know. I, I don't like putting stuff like that into my dog, right? So I think prevention is, uh, first off, I understand that it takes at least 24 hours for a tick to transmit any disease of being embedded. Yeah, there's still, there's still a lot of, well, 
Yeah, I mean, but you you have you you know, a small tick can can inflict that if you don't catch it. But yeah, I, I'm very thorough with making sure Molly, you know, giving her a good rub down and stuff like that, and making sure. I guess the best advice you could do is talk to your vet. Of course, they're going to try and pump medications at you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So. I, I I've dealt with that with, with uh, my dog. Uh, my dog does not do well with that medication. I've tried two types, um, and she gets gets sick off it. So I've talked to my vet. My vet, my my vet's really good actually. So holistic vet, and um, yeah. So she's told me other ways to deal with it. Not to say that those medications are wrong, because in fact, actually, if they work for your dog, I think that's fantastic because you don't want your dog to get Lyme disease, right? So, right. Uh, yeah, I, I know Claire, uh, the assistant superintendent of, of, of Woodland Caribou Park. I mean, they're, they're way up north and there's lots of ticks there, but there was never Lyme carrying ticks. And her dog, uh, yeah, months ago got deathly ill, almost died from, from, from that. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Okay, we can finish up on that a bit. Okay, so I have somebody down in the basement for the big announcement. Stick around, everybody, because big announcement coming here in about uh, two or I three thought, minutes. I thought Preston and I were the big announcement. Well, this oh. year, you're, you're going to be impressed with this one, too. You're going to oh, be really impressed. Oh, I see. But right now, let's give away a bit of swag. Uh, I've got uh, three sets of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show decals and Canoe Hound Adventure decals to give away. And I'm going to give it to the first three people that answer this question in the chat. Uh, at least from what I could see on my end. We've mentioned this name a bunch of times. What's the name of Preston's dog? <laughs> First three people to answer that get uh, Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Prize, and they can send me their information to the canoe hound at gmail.com. Is it just me? Or is Preston's there's one, there's two, and there's three. Okay. Oh, there you you guys look at it. The Preston's couch looks like a bum. <laughs> A bump. <laughs> no, no, no. Preston, get up, take your dog off the couch. All righty. So the fastest typers tonight, we have uh, Martin. Oh. It looks like a bump. Take your dog off and walk away and show everybody. Go, I ahead. Don't, Go ahead. I don't know. Where yeah. is we got Christina Negarth. It does. It does. And then we have uh, one of our luckiest people on this show. We have Mama Bear's backpack. So there we go. You guys uh, just shoot me an email with your full mailing address to canoehound at gmail.com and I will get your uh, your prizes out to you uh, as soon as possible, as fast as the uh, the postal service will work. So yeah. gentlemen, yeah. I'm going to put you both in the basement for a few minutes. Ah, you know, I'm going to leave you up here for, for, for comment section. Yeah. Okay. Okay. While we're doing that, uh, Preston has to get the dog and walk away from his couch to make everybody look at what I'm talking about. It's just Grab, grab the dog, walk away from the couch, and let everybody look at the Come on. You can do it. Oh, geez. Now look. Okay, now watch, watch. When he takes the dog away, okay, that looks like a bump. Okay, Mama Bear, I got you there. Thank you very much. I will do that, uh, just so you know. That. So Marion Sontag, uh, you just won Mama Bear's prize. So Marion Sontag. If you want to shoot me an email to canoehound at gmail.com, and I will gladly send you out a, uh, a set of Canoe Hound Outdoor Adventure show stickers. So we'll, there it is. Congratulations. Very uh, grateful. Thank you very uh, very much there, Mama Bear. That's awesome. Okay, so big announcement time. I'm going to introduce to everybody, many of you know this gentleman. This is uh, David Bain, who is the organizer of the uh, Ontario Winter Backcountry Ooh. Canoe Thumb. No, <laughs> the Ontario Winter Camping Symposium and the, uh, the Ontario Backcountry Canoe Symposium. And we have doing, some Dennis? really cool news. Yes. Yeah. Right, right down here. Yes. Oh, man. How are you, you doing, David? Kevin. It's very exciting. Oh, by the way, though, before he says his big announcement, yep. he only cats, so really, he's nobody. That's right. Oh. Okay, everybody sit down for this news because David's got some really cool stuff he wants to say. Thank you very much, Dennis, for having me. But I apologize; I'm wearing the wrong color plaid here. I don't, uh, I don't have the Kenora dinner jacket on. Uh, you should have warned me. I, I was left out too, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks, uh, thanks again for having me on. Uh, I guess the big announcement is that, uh, in an effort to reach out to everyone in these tough times, and based on the fact that we had to unfortunately cancel the Ontario. Backcountry Canoe Symposium for April the 4th. We are going to try with Dennis's help 
uh, to run our on, our symposium online this year on April the 18th. So right. Saturday, April the 18th at seven o'clock. Uh, tune in to this YouTube channel. We'll be posting a link, uh, and uh, we are going to have uh, many of our guests that we're going to speak at the symposium this year uh, come and join us, and they'll be. Uh, chatting with us, doing interviews, and uh, showing us a few things through video. And uh, we're very excited to be able to reach out and bring together the paddling community um, in this time because none of us are getting out uh, to do what we love. And so we thought it'd be a good opportunity to continue the kind of work that Dennis does every week and uh, actually try and give back a little bit uh, at these times when everyone is is shut in and and looking for something to distract them maybe from some of the news of the world. So um, we just wanted to let everybody know that's uh, listening here tonight to Canoe Hounds Adventure uh, that, uh, yes, the Ontario Backcountry Canoe Symposium will be online Saturday, April the 18th at 7 p.m. right here uh, with the assistance of Canoe Hound and uh, featuring many of the speakers that we were planning on having on April the 4th. So. Uh, hopefully you can join us. When you when you mentioned us to me, David, I'll, I'll tell you, man, it uh, it really it really sent a shiver down my spine because I was so disappointed at the fact that you had to cancel, obviously for good reason, and uh, just the fact that you know your presenters had 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 already start begun preparations. Uh, obviously, they knew what they were going to speak about, and I'm sure much work has already gone into it. But the fact that we could actually probably still, I'm sure there's going to be a couple hiccups maybe. We're going to try and make it as flawless as possible. But you know what? Uh, at least we're going to get it across. Uh, then presenters are going to have that opportunity to, uh, to to do their thing, right? Yeah. I I think, you know, really the key here is that uh, you've stepped up to help us out, Dennis, because the learning curve would be incredibly steep for, for us to try and master the technology that you use every week to to reach out to the canoeing community and uh you know people are are uh, spreading the news around hopefully we can set some kind of a record because normally we can only seat uh 375 people or so in the theater and maybe we can get uh, an audience bigger than that on a saturday night and and we can all come together and and just sort of support each other at this time and maybe take our mind off things a little bit and and talk about that thing that we all love to do so much and uh, and maybe experience some escapism for uh, for just one night in the middle of all this uh, stuff. I'm still kicking myself for not having the, the Kenora dinner jacket here, guys. Even Nancy was prepared. <laughs> I, <laughs> That's okay. So uh, I, I see a, there's a, seems to be a lot of excitement here in the, uh, in the chat about it. Uh, Somebody yeah. asking, well, my own daughter asking, please outline the details here and below the video. Uh, we will get all the details. The details are coming. Going out through uh, David's different social medias and through Matt Olson's social media feeds. Uh, I'll be getting it out there on my Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and however we can get this out there. Uh, let's try to make this a really cool big event um, and, and have a great day, you know. And the best part of it is, is... Uh, for those that might not be able to attend at 7 p.m. on the 18th of uh, April, uh, they can watch the replay. That's right. Right? So they're not going to miss it, out. It will live in perpetuity uh, on the interweb. So uh, there you go. It, it's an exciting opportunity to people for people to come back and see it again and again and again. So, yeah, um, I, I, would, I would outline who's going to be speaking, but we're still – finalizing that one last little bit. So I, I don't want to give anything away without uh, clarifying with the speakers, but uh, we will get the speakers out to you as soon as possible. It'll be a very similar lineup to what it was supposed to be at the theater. And uh, again, I'm just very excited to be able to uh, offer people this opportunity to sort of take an hour or two. Uh, we don't really have an idea yet how long it'll run, but it's starting at seven. It might be an hour and a half. It might be two hours. Uh, the audience will have a chance to participate. Uh, as long as we keep Kevin off the screen, I think we'll probably be safe. Um, don't give me that look. I've been on shows with you before, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin doesn't look guilty, does he? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome, David. I, I thank you for uh, considering me to be a part of this. That's uh, right. I know you guys put so much into this. Yeah. 
I'm trying to stab Kevin, but I'm, I'm, everything's backwards here. Everything's so. backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your cat? Over there. Yeah. Use my Kevin cat. Yes, here. I will. Kevin over there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I, I know you don't want to give away any speakers, but do you have anybody cemented in at this point? Oh, we, we do. And and so um, I, I guess we could give um, a couple of names out. I, I know... Uh, that Scott Robinson man camping is uh, planning on joining us. And I'm, I'm very much uh, looking forward to that. He was going to present on Quetico uh, at the symposium. And I believe he's going to stick to that same topic. So um, Quetico is a place I've never been. I'm very much looking forward to sort of hearing his take on it. Kevin, I know you've been there quite a bit. Uh, I hear a lot of great things about it. And uh, it's always good to hear from people who've been there and sort of give you the idea of whether it's worth that trip. Uh, Cause I know it's a bit of a hike for those of us who live in Southern Ontario to get up past Thunder Bay. But uh, Kevin, you went to university up there, didn't you Lakehead? No, I went to Sioux college. Sioux college. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sioux St. Marie. Okay. Yeah. So you were up in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, one of our speakers will be a, a repeat from last year. Uh, actually, Kate Barrett is joining us again. And those of you who saw Kate last year, uh, I, I think universally everyone was impressed with Kate's presentation last year. Now, she is right in the middle of some very serious coursework for her uh, university degree, and she's at OISE doing outdoor education. So, um, you know, we're not asking her for... Uh, to put a lot of time into this at her, it, it's a tough time for her and she's very busy, but um, she did want to come back and talk a bit more about how, to, and this is a subject Kevin, you and I have talked about a bit because we met through outdoor education. And uh, so she's going to sort of be talking about the idea of outdoor education and how that can be built into uh, a canoe trip. And uh, also touching a little bit on her topic from last year, which was, uh, getting young women out and involved in, in outdoor education and in canoe tripping as well. So, so those are two of our names that I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure are joining us. And again, I think we just need to, uh, oh, my partner's phone is ringing. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, <laughs> always something, always something. She's looking for it. We have no idea where her phone is. <laughs> There's always somebody. Uh, anyway, those are two of the names, and, uh, you know, we we will have four speakers. We may have five. We'll see how it goes. A lot of it depends on the Internet, and uh, I've heard people saying with everyone watching this much Netflix, um, you know, it, it's slowing things down, and so we're, you know, we're going to do our best, and there may be some technical glitches, but uh, I have a lot of confidence in Dennis and his ability to, uh, sort of shepherd us through. Yes, I know I'm putting some pressure on you there, buddy. <laughs> but we really do appreciate you jumping in and helping us out. Uh, I think it's going to be so. a great night. I think it's going to be a I great hope so. I hope so. And yeah, I hope you, you guys can join us as well. Nancy, I know you're normally busy Saturdays uh, at 7 o'clock. You've got a regular gig, but uh, if you can join us, maybe bring Preston along with you. What happened to Nancy's dinner jacket? I got the impression that she she was acting a little strangely, and I got the impression <laughs> she's overheating. Yes, embarrassed or overheating. Could well, be. David, what, what I'm be. seeing in the chat here, everybody seems to be quite excited about it. Uh, really, a couple of cool uh, comments there, uh, asking if uh, Man Camper might be popping in, and uh, but yeah, we're, we we got to nail everything down. Like David said, uh, a lot of it's got to do with uh, internet. Uh, connection because a lot of the presenters are actually in rural areas, right? And they don't have the best uh, internet feed. So yeah, yeah. And in fact, even those of us in the city, I don't know again about you guys, but I'm noticing the internet connections are not what they were, you know, a month ago. Um, so things are slowing down, and and bandwidth is being used up, and and uh, so, but we will do the best we can, and uh, I'm very excited. Kevin, you had a question, I think you raised your hand there. No, no. I, well, no, I had a comment towards Preston because dogs should not wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> dogs, Preston. 
She's an ambassador. <laughs> the last time you were at my house, you had a pink dress on that dog. I do no uh, a sweater. Sweater. That was <laughs> a pink sweater. Sorry. Dennis, I think this is a good time for me to say goodbye and let these two uh, continue with their with their uh, sure thing. Their chatter. But hey, thanks we'll again for having me. In touch there. Uh, me, you, and we'll Matt be in touch. over logistics. No problem, and uh, we'll definitely get this thing all hammered out and bring these people a great show. Sounds good, Dennis. Thanks again thanks, for David. having me. Have a great night. Uh, be safe and healthy. Eh? You too. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Everyone. If David Bain's cat wore a pink sweater, I have would have no problem with it. Okay? But Preston? Wrong. <laughs> There we go. No boy. Alrighty. Have a great night, David. There we go. There's, There's my cat. cat. Yeah. Yeah. There's there we Max. Go. There we go. Oh look, my dog's going to attack him. <laughs> Take care, yeah. guys. Thanks, David. Have a great night. Uh, you great too, night, David. Thanks. Bye bye. So there we have it, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, some really big news. This is going to be a, a good time. Hopefully, we could pull this off for you uh, in grand style. And uh, so I guess we're not missing the uh, Backcountry Canoe Symposium after all. That's so all right. Right. Yeah. The same as being there, but, uh, you know, getting to meet all the vendors and everything else. But uh, that's awesome. So remember, put it on your calendars for April 18th, 7 p.m., right here, right here on Canoe Hound Adventures. You'll see us all posting all kinds of stuff. Please share it out to your friends in the paddling community that you know uh, that one were interested in going in the first place, may have had tickets that were refunded. Or if uh, anybody, if you're part of canoe forums or anything like that, once you see it on my Facebook page or David's or Matt Olson's, please share it out there. Let's get this out. Let's turn it into a, a very big event. And uh, the more people that attend online, the better, right? So it's, uh, it's all... It's going to be a win-win situation, and it's free. And the tailgate party, uh, Mama Bear and Daniel, we'll think of something. We'll think of something. Anyways, gentlemen, let's uh, let's get back into uh, finishing up this whole dog thing. Okay. Remember? <laughs> That's what we were talking about. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so I had mentioned there we finished off on first aid kits. If you want a copy of that, drop me an email, and I'll definitely get that out to you. Uh, as soon as possible, as well as a link to uh, Kevin's article, which is right here, but you'll get to see it online, paddling with your best friend, your dog. So oh, nice. good article, by the way, Kevin. Thank you. Appreciate you sending that over. Okay, so uh, keeping clean. I guess we get into those dog rolling situations and things like that. Dogs have a mind of their own, or it's their instinctual thing to, uh, in a lot of cases, to get themselves dirty. Uh, we could tell stories on this because there's not much way, not many ways we can stop them from doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's good to be camping around water. Yeah. <laughs> that's one thing, but um, I think that's another owner issue, right? Like you're just going to have to get over that yourself. You, you go, <laughs> your dog is going to be dirty and Nancy is the worst for it. We've already talked about it. She seems to find poop, and she likes rolling in it. And I don't get it. I've never understood it. And um, she just finds it. And what's really gross is that if you go to – I'm not going to get into details, but if you go into one of those campsites, we've all been on one, where there's obviously been a lot of people, and they haven't been all that great about hiding where they're going, um, that becomes an issue. And, and I don't know how many times uh, – um, usually when I do those presentations, I have this like running gag where I, I update the, the, the roll and poop photos uh, from last year and stuff. And I have this one photo that I show, and then I show another photo, which is basically identical. But I tell everyone uh, or I remind everyone that this, this may look like the same photo, but it's actually 10 minutes later. This was after her rolling in poop. I take her into the, the, the water to clean her off, and then I'm cleaning myself off, and I let her go, and she ran right back to where the poop was. <laughs> <laughs> and there I was, back in the river again, trying to get it all off. And it's inconvenient um, when it's cold out, and you don't want to get yourself wet and things like that. 
So one of the things that I've started to do now is bring like a, one of those buckets or, or kitchen sinks or whatever you can do. So at least you'd have access to without getting like too, too cold yourself and the dog itself. Um, but um, yeah, they can get into all kinds of trouble. They can get into all kinds of dirt, mud. Nancy seems to have this weird thing where she'll find like she she's actually afraid of water but she'll dunk herself into mud and grossness. And she finds the grossest spots to just dunk in. And she's got that like really proud of herself face as she's lying in it. <laughs> and, and then of course she want, that's when she wants to cuddle. That's when she wants to come up and share with you by rubbing up against you and stuff like that. So if anyone out there has any advice to me as far as how to keep a dog clean, I would be more than happy to hear it. You know what? It's not always fecal matter either, right? Uh, a yeah. lot of times a dog, because a dog's got a sense of smell, and they'll they'll seek out an animal carcass, whether it can be a dead frog, a dead fish, or something bigger in the bush. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I can tell you a story. It never my not my dog has never done it. My dog likes to roll in the poop if she gets that opportunity sometimes, right? And always at the worst time or the most yeah. opportune time, right? But a buddy of mine's dog, the, the one I was mentioning, the blue healer, we're in camp and the dog's always around. Well, the dog disappeared. We're camped on an island, so that was that was okay there. But the dog disappeared, and my buddy Jay kept calling the dog, calling the dog, calling. Finally, uh, Lucky come back, right? And he had ro he was rolling in something, and you could hear my buddy just every curse word under the <laughs> under the yeah. sun. And then he hear <laughs> in my tent at the time, he could hear. Ka -chish, ka -chish, ka -chish. <laughs> He's dunking the dog, right? <laughs> Giving it a bath because it found a carcass and went out and rolled in it and just stunk the high heavens, right? So, yeah, it's not always fecal matter, but yeah, you get those carcasses. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, Kevin's like cringing. Yeah, no, it, no, it's a dog instinct. It, it's a it's a canine instinct. It's to, to hide its scent, right? So yeah. it's going to roll in anything that smells really bad, so it, it can hide. So it, it's. It's hard to to tell a tennis player not to play tennis, right? So, you know, it, um, I, I I don't know if there's an answer except control your animal if there's going to be a problem. Uh, my first dog was the worst. Like it it, it, w it would eat the poop and then get in the tent and throw it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> everybody in the chat just did that, Preston. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I was on a guided trip and there was uh there was a there was a couple he went to poop in the woods on an island before we went to bed and my dog disappeared. I was wondering where my dog was, and sure enough, I was looking at the dog and the dog was lipping its lips. So I was like, oh God. <laughs> and it threw up like human poop that had just been pooped. Oh, enemy in my tent, right? So it happens. I don't know what I have no advice for that except, yeah, get over it. Uh, drink scotch, yeah, yeah. Well, how quickly do you wake up when you hear that sound, right? When you hear that, <laughs> like you're it happened, it happened on my winter camping trip here on this, like last, like last weekend, there, me and my buddy in our tent. And I, I guess we gave, fed her too much of the ham hock that night. Mm. And about, uh, I don't know, five o'clock in the morning, you know, you're all nice and nice and toasty wrapped up in that sleeping bag. And you start hearing that. Oh, no. <laughs> you're trying oh, to no. find the zipper to get out really fast. Oh, no. Do not I give quick at all. animal or human food. Uh, oh, the, the only time I, my dog has animal or human food is when I do bacon on a trip. Um, I, and I couldn't do this, but the dog knows if we're on a canoe trip and I can take him, he's going to get something. Other than that, that dog has no human food at all mm -hmm. um, because of that. The dog is like, because mm -hmm. its body's not used to it, right? So, Well, even if a dog does have uh, human food here and there, like Nancy's used to her pepperettes, for example, right? Um, but oftentimes we go camping with different food than we normally do eat ourselves or if you're eating those um, uh, vacuum seals packed and there's like a lot of sodium, a lot of like preservatives and stuff like that, we have to remember that this might be the first time that they're eating that. So their stomach isn't going to be uh, used to it. That might not settle too well for them, right? So we're, if we're just gratuitously feeding the dog, they're going to have upset stomachs and, and stuff like that. So 
Yeah, it's tough. Like it's not yeah. good for the dog at all. The dog should not be eating human food. Like well, uh, it depends on the food too, right? Dogs yeah, are meant well, to eat meat, right? So, but uh, my my dog is a uh, canine garbage can. Uh, that dog will eat absolutely anything you throw her away, with the exception of bananas and maybe a mushroom or something, right? But that dog will eat anything, anything, anything. anything. If, it, if, if, it, if it goes in your mouth, it'll go in her mouth. <laughs> she don't care, right? And it never used to be like that until one day I took my dad on a boat camping trip. And my dad thought it would be a cool idea to share some of his pasta that was left over with the dog, right? Some bacon carbonara or, or something like that. Ever since then, that dog is just, like I say, a canine garbage can. It just wants your food. You, you can't eat. Like, she's like, <laughs> she, she tells you she wants all right she gets insulted and, uh, if you don't give her something yeah well again to that like boils down to the like you know don't be stupid know your dog all that kind of stuff too because the other thing like you also want to integrate a certain level of discipline as well right like you you don't want that dog going into the into the your food bag right looking for stuff and and that right so I mean, that's part of it as well. You don't want them to get sick, but you also don't want them eating, like, you know, the rest of the food for the trip, right? You know, which some dogs will do as well. So, yeah, I mean, that's tough. I Actually, the, the thing that I've been doing um, over the last few years is I used to get so upset because I would bring a big bag of kibble for Nancy, and we'd be carrying these things over the portage, and, you know, I've, I've – I've, portion it out, you know, how many days we're going to be out here, how many scoops and all this kind of stuff. And the bag never gets smaller. And I don't know what she does out there, but she want, she just doesn't want to eat for a while. Right. Um, and then after a while she gets really hungry and stuff. Right. Um, but I was coming home with these big bags of kibble and anyone who's gone on a long portage, like you start to like, you know, like look at your bag, like from this myopic kind of perspective, like, oh, that shouldn't be in here. If I would have thrown this, I wouldn't have been so miserable. And, wow. you know, ounces to pounds and all that kind of stuff. And it was obnoxious, this huge bag of kibble that I would have to carry over and back and it never gets any smaller. And so what I wound up doing was I started to look into dehydrated uh, food. It's um, a little bit pricier, um, but it's super light. And you just add water to it, or or she she doesn't even um, um, like I don't even add any water to it. Uh, I just break it up, and it's like oh. a, a fantastic treat. That's right. Good, good sneeze, by the way, right into the yeah. You, yeah. Even though I live on my own, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's super light, and it's it's changed my life in the in the sense that not only does she love it so much better, so she'll eat. Um, but it's light and it, um, and you get them at, at pretty much any, um, dog food store. So oh, totally recommend that's that. All, what, it's an actual product. Uh, the, the, yeah. So it's dehydrated. It's usually like just off, uh, off the aisle of where the normal kibble is. And the yeah. one that I buy is, oh, and I can't remember the name, uh, but it's like dehydrated duck. She loves it. It comes in these little cubes or okay. a Cube. I've seen that, and and I just you know sometimes uh, you know to make it easier for her, I'll just I'll, I'll crumble it a bit. But it, um, I they smell. I haven't tasted that these ones, but it smells very similar to the duck treats I give her anyway. Well, you haven't you haven't tried your dog's treats. How do you know it's how do you know it's it's good? I ate, I ate a dog biscuit when I was a kid. Huh. <laughs> I got no comment. <laughs> I, oh my I, God. I did that for a gag, actually. I did like I, I bought this uh, dehydrated food, and it looked like um, it looked like cereal, like that brand cereal that the old old people eat. And then I I put the water in, and I scooped it up, and ate it. Oh, it was not good. Yeah, do, do, dogs dogs will eat rotting meat, right? So I thought it'd be funny. The dogs are derivative or you know ancestors of the wolves, I so they say. Yeah, right? yeah. So the things dogs can eat, their their stomachs are pretty darn strong, right? And if they uh, if they eat the wrong things, they'll they'll induce their own vomiting for the most part by eating grass yeah. or something like that, right? So look, yeah. look, I got to write a note when Dennis contacts me, say no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ed McMahon. Jeez. <laughs> um, <done>. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, well. Anyway, so what what what's uh 
You, you mentioned, Kevin, you mentioned your dog should be responsible for carrying their own kibble, uh, which would mean that the dog would need their own little doggy backpack. Yeah. Right? So you're carrying a life jacket, then you're bringing a doggy backpack, right, that you're going to swap out. Yeah. What uh, what type of things should we pa be packing for our dogs to, to make them more comfortable on a trip, to make them feel like uh, they're at home? Uh, yeah, I. Well, this sounds crazy, but I bring a, a little blankie or a toy that she has at home so she feels comfortable the first couple of nights. We all feel kind of apprehensive at night. The first night or second night, we all think a bear is going to kill us, right? The dog's the same thing. The dog is like, what? are we doing what's going on this is not normal so i always bring something uh, at home that she can smell and she cuddles with she doesn't cuddle with me <laughs> of course not kevin <laughs> <laughs> so i do that um i you know i bring the things we talked about like an umbrella for the canoe for the sun uh her, her own uh bed uh system um that she knows where to go to in the tent uh, her own foam mat in the canoe where she knows where to go to in the canoe. Uh, it just sort of that, that comfort zone, the familiar. We all are comfortable with the familiar, right? So. Yep. Um, sorry, I was just reading a comment here about vegan dogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's all normal. Actually, my daughter's boyfriend was asking about, like, you know, what about a vegan dog type of thing, right? And there's been a few comments coming in. Uh, Moto Smith Garage said vegan dogs are easily offended with not bringing on a canoe trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a diet thing. Like I, 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 I get that it, it's a it's a canine and it's made to eat meat. Um, but be your own person. I think I, I have no problem if you want to have the dog to be a, a vegan. Um, my daughter became a vegetarian uh, for a while, <laughs> and then I, I I was one longer than she was. So, uh, but. It, 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 make sure your dog eats well. I think I think that's the major point we get out of this. Make sure you don't give it crap because it's working all day, just like you are. Yeah. When you're on a, on a canoe trip, everybody knows this. You're on a canoe trip. Food is really, really important. Mm -hmm. It's the nutrients to get you from A to B. You, your feet are really important. It gets you from A to B. It really becomes really important. And so uh, don't eat craft dinner every day uh, on, on a trip because, you know, it tastes good, but that's not good for you. So same with your dog. Just don't give your dog – a really bad diet and expect it to keep going all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it, when it comes to diet items, my, my dog is at home here on a routine, right? Every morning she gets up, she's got to have her little raw hide thing with chicken wrapped around it type of thing. Right. That's her morning treat. She, until she gets that, she's not a happy dog. Well, she's not a miserable dog, but she's not a happy dog. Right. And then through the day, she gets like, you know, little treats. And one, one way to minimize your dog's treats is don't give him the big one if it's a big dog. Throw the dog one of those little tiny milk bones yeah. for small dogs, right? The dog's happy. It's getting some, right? And then at nighttime, a dentist stick. My dog has to have her dentist. She's got to brush her teeth before she goes to bed. So when we're packing food for the dog, right, we, we do the portion sizes like Preston mentioned. You know, this is how much the dog should be eating her cup of food a day and, uh, and her various snacks, right? And you do that and you still wonder why are you coming home with the stuff or you pack what you think she needs and it's gone in two days. Because yeah. it, so I always err on the side of caution to say, okay, I'm bringing more than she needs and I don't make her carry it. I carry it. Right. But I'm getting a dog. I'm getting a doggy backpack. She's going to carry her own stuff. Right? Uh, so really seriously, does the dog really enjoys it. If, if it gives a purpose for it to do on the portage. And the two things my dog uh, knows uh, for food wise on trip. I never give it bacon at home, but I will give it a little bit of bacon. And she knows that on trip. So I'll be cooking bacon at home and she won't bother with me. But when we're on trip. She smells bacon. Woohoo! And that's her joy. But the other thing is I get liver um, and I dehydrate liver uh, pieces for her. Yeah, we and, never had to. Yeah, in the dehydrator. So I don't buy it. I make it on my own. And liver is very high in, in um, nutrients, right? And that dog needs it. And I don't feed that dog liver treats at home um, that I make on my own dehydrator. Like, I, well, now I have time to do that. But and the other dog, we all have time. <laughs> yeah, we all have time, yeah. But um, yeah, so the dog knows when we go on trip, oh, I get bacon and liver. I love you, Kevin. I'm going to go forever on the portage. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I dehydrate chicken as well. 
Um, like anytime I have leftovers and stuff, I I, mean, I just pop it into the dehydrator and that becomes like, um, you know, uh, part of her lunches or, or, or uh, part of the camp uh, treats or anything like that. And the great thing about that too is anything really chewy, um, especially because I'm, I'm feeding her the dehydrated stuff, which isn't chewy. At least she gets a, a you know, some little jaw exercise and cause they're very comforted with the chewing and the, you know, really working for their food and stuff like that too. So I, I get, I get, it's a good angel to gather firewood. That's how I get her to do the chewy. <laughs> yeah. Well, she doesn't like doing that anymore. She used to like be like, um, she used to, I've had dogs where um, you bring a toy to comfort them, like you were saying and stuff like that. But she doesn't, she's not into that at all. Like she doesn't chew on the sticks anymore. And, uh, or even like those, those like the dog chew things. Um, she's just not interested unless she can steal it from another dog. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a packing. Yeah. Treat. Now, do you, do you guys bring a, a toy for your dog or you just consider the forest, a nice stick off the forest floor is your dog's toy? I would if I had a dog that liked toys. Like uh, the, the last dog that I had before that, I would bring a ball um, because he just was like very, you can keep him very focused and give him a job to do by chasing that ball over and over again. And at least he had like that, like he almost didn't know what to do when he was out there. So at least this gave him like some kind of like means to explore in a healthy way. Um, but Nancy, she's just not into it. Um, but I would if, if, if they were, and it is recommended sometimes. Well, you, you said Nancy's what, 17 years old or something? Like that? Yeah, she's 16. Well, at it's least. like throwing um, her cane out into the forest and expect yeah. her to go get it, right? Oh, well, seriously. <laughs> I got to tell you, she is so <laughs> She is so athletic still now. Like, she's just so, like, incredible. She always has been. And well, she, she looks in great shape now, 17 years old. Like, that's. Yeah, I, I and I don't know what I did. Like I didn't I, like it, it, it's just good genes. Like actually, that brings up the subject too about the idea of um, like what dogs are better uh, for camping. And uh, one of the things I get asked that all the time, like what breed. Um, but um, the mutts, man, they're healthy. They are so and and you rescue a dog who's so appreciative. They mm. enjoy um, life a lot uh, when you get out there. Um, Nancy is. I have no idea what she is. She's just some kind of terrier mix, but she's um, she's got all the tools required to to be a great dog out there. And um, you know, um, not to get into that whole thing, but she's also not like overbred and, and like that those super anxious overbred dogs and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. really consider you want a canoe dog, really go consider uh, adopting. Yeah, um, you're doing sure. yourself, the dog, everybody, a lot of good by doing that. So consider that. I, I really wish the chat was working here tonight because I, I'd be popping comments up here uh, yeah. through this whole thing. Eh? Fancy comments, so I don't know what people are saying. Are they saying anything nice about yeah. us? Oh, yeah. No, no, a lot, a lot of good ones here. Uh, Kayak to me. Oh, teach the dog how to fish the shoreline and catch you some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. My, my my first uh, uh, dog, uh, Bailey, <clears throat> there was, uh, my da dad got me this thing for Christmas. It was one of those Billy Basses, you know, with the bass yep. tongue. And so I, I played it to my dog, and the dog went nuts on it and tried to attack it. I was like, that's kind of weird. And the next time, and I had this dog for a while, the next time I was out with the dog on a canoe trip, I caught a bass, and I was reeling it in. That dog jumped into the water to get that bass. And I swear to God, it was because of the Billy Bass. Yeah, not funny. No See, I, I I don't usually bring a toy for Molly uh, because she'll she'll be happy with a stick, but she's not really a fetching kind of dog. My dog previous to Molly, Chasey, she was a uh, yellow lab, and that dog I would bring a golf ball, and mm. every day at camp that dog would drive you nuts to throw something for her. So I'd bring a golf ball, I'd pitch that into the forest. We would come home with that golf ball. Really. And, only once did we ever lose one because it got stuck in a, the crotch of a tree, like between the branches. Oh, no. And it was oh. even out of my reach. I couldn't get up to it. But she knew exactly where it was, and she would work the whole pattern, you know, hmm. big triangle pattern. And she'd come up with that ball. She'd come and drop it at your feet. It's like, are you kidding me? You would give it your all, and it bounce off like 20 trees and bouncing around and land, right? You know, much like my golf game. And, <laughs> uh, you know, she would come back with the ball every time. 
Oh yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Nancy, Nancy's actually caught a fish once. Um, but uh, and uh, uh, Kevin, you'll appreciate this. She uh, she caught a salmon at Brawny Creek. Oh, cool. So needless to say, we we put the fish back and we got the hell out of there. <laughs> That would be illegal. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope Pine Martin is listening tonight. So basically what you're saying is your dog is a better angler than Pine Martin. <laughs> is he in the, I haven't seen him. Is he in the chat? No, he's probably out fishing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll leave that we'll leave that feud between the two of you. Last week was funny as hell though. I have to say that. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh Last topic of, of this whole thing is uh, what are some of the better breeds for this? And you know what? That I guess I, I could throw that question away because Preston kind of touched on it. You know, go find a dog that you know. I, I I can't say a poodle wouldn't be any good because poodles are actually great hunting dogs, right? They're hunting dogs, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. you know, any, any type of dog. I guess it's a, a matter of how you uh, how you train that dog and you, yeah. you get that dog accustomed to. Uh, yeah, there's there's some dogs we should talk about with that though. So yeah. uh, please, if you have a husky, you really have to realize that that dog is going to run away. It wants mm -hmm. to roam. So uh, all the people that I've tripped with that have huskies, they always have their dog on the leash. And if they didn't, they were looking for it for two days. It's just the breed. Like it, it's, yeah. it's not it's not doesn't dislike the owner. It, it just leaves camp. Um, and also the other is a beagle. Uh, beagles have this yeah. uh, thing of just when it sees a moose or a deer, it harasses wildlife. And that's illegal, by the way, under, under yeah. the hunting license. It's not to do with anything, shooting an animal, killing an animal. It, it's pursuing it. So if you have a dog and you're an Algonquin and that dog leaps in the water and starts swimming after a moose or a deer, you're illegally hunting uh, with that dog. Mm -hmm. And a, 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 a conservation officer will be on you like, like, like no tomorrow. I've seen it. I've been with the conservation officer with that. You can't do that. It's not right for the dog. So in Quebec, everybody's asked me this question, uh, oh, for years now, why can't you bring a dog into the interior or a campground in Quebec? And I, I think it's stupid, but the law is based on that problem, that they, yeah. the, the whole Quebec North is run like by Lezec, which is actually um, the uh, hunting groups and fishing groups uh, and forager groups, right? So... So basically, they don't want you going off with your dog and having the dog chase wildlife, and so therefore, it's 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 illegal to have a dog with you uh, in the, in that province. Yeah. The other thing you can tell is um, sometimes the the size of your dog. Um, the bit the first question I think I ever get whenever I do any of these presentations, when Nancy and I do the demos at uh, the shows and stuff, is um, my dog's too big. Um, to be in a canoe and stuff like that. And, you know, that's a consideration. I think some training will help you with that and all that, but it's worth a consideration. But the other thing is the really small dogs as well. Because if you're going out into the back country at a certain size, right, um, like I get warned regularly, especially when I go down to, um, to Shirley Lake um, where they have the golden eagles, is like these are, are you know, um, they're, their prey once you get to a certain size too. And yeah. that's not to say that they won't, won't be good out there or they can't be good, but that's another consideration, whether you want to keep them on a leash, whether you want to keep an eye on them. Like I've had, I've had the Eagle circle above, right? Um, any fisherman will, has had, you know, some kind of uh, um, um, raptor like floating around above them and stuff like that too. So you just want to be careful. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, and, and yeah. we've already touched on it before, but if anybody missed that part, uh, there was no dog, uh, and you need to know this. Well, I shouldn't say that. There was a couple of species of dogs that are trained for going after bears, but any dog you have at home, if you think you're bringing a dog to protect yourself against bears in the wilderness, oh, yeah, that's absolutely wrong. Yep. Absolutely wrong. The bear will come into the camp to eat your dog. That's why it's coming in. And I can tell you, numerous times that that's happened to me so yes i i get it uh well i'm gonna bring my dog and my dog will bark and it, you know, you'll know when the bear's coming in it's the dog is luring the bear in <laughs> and yeah. and if the bear goes at you the dog will try to defend you but it will always come back to you bringing the, 
the, the bear to you. So yeah. you really should know that. Yeah. I, I've often heard that. I've often heard that. And it's, uh, yeah, sometimes I wonder, should I be sleeping with Molly in my hammock? <laughs> well, <laughs> We're both rolled up in there like a burrito, right? It's something to consider. I think the, the other the other thing to say about that is, I mean, that is what, like, the original purpose of the dog was, was the watchdog, right? But, like, like to Kevin's point, right, like, you know, don't rely on that as your as your defense. I think... Um, you know, generally speaking, just having someone alert, you know, um, will help with the bears. But again, too, like, you know, be smart about that, right? Don't expect that to be your solution, right? Like, yeah. don't expect that, yeah, you know, um, which is which is the point. They'll certainly be helpful or whatever, but, you know, um, the, <laughs> it's not the... I, I've, I've had instances where we've been at a camp, and it happened to me uh, when I did my solo trip with Molly last year in Algonquin. We uh we got to a campsite and she was alerted to something. Something was b- lurking behind the camp. Camp. I don't know. It could have been whatever. It could have been a porcupine. It could have been a bear. It could have been a chipmunk. For all I know. Yeah. She. You. With with my dog, I, I kind of. You get to know your dog's personality, right? And she, when she's like constantly looking in one direction, you know she's on to something. And she's not a, a growler or barker or chaser or anything like that. But just seeing by her uh, her actions, she was alerting me that there was something lurking behind the camp, right? Note to self, okay, make a little more noise, maybe try and scare it away, flashlight, whatever, right? Try, trying to get rid of whatever the predator may be. But I've, al- I've always worried about that and wondered about, you know, the, my dog being uh, – being a meal for like you say a golden eagle or an eagle or an osprey or, or yeah. something right yeah uh, I, don't want, I don't want to freak everybody out it's just another consideration right yeah we, um, we had uh about five or six years ago an island campsite that we were camping on and there was a huge eagle's nest on this really tall white pine tree or like a dead white pine it's like way the hell up there and the nest was full of uh baby bald eagles and the mother and the father would fly around and, and they'd, they'd stay like at one side of the lake, one side of the lake. We didn't camp there. We, we ended up camping far, a little farther away, but probably still within eye shot of the eagle. But because my buddy's dog, he had a little pup at the time, we, we don't want that thing to get snatched up. And it could happen fast, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I got to tell you a story with that. It's not a good story, but it's a good story. Uh, years ago, when I went out west, uh, and I'll do the quick version of this, um, uh, there was some coyotes denning up uh, in, in the uh, park that I was staying at, and the park warden went around to everybody and said, okay, well, we don't want you to camp around there because they're denning up, and we also want to keep all your pets inside if you could. And in the morning, this guy, he didn't listen to the rules, just like a lot of people are not listening to the rules right now, but we won't get into that. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, he kept his dog. It was a poodle, white poodle, and he kept it leashed on a tree outside his uh, trailer. And the coyotes came in and ate it. And uh, we woke up in the morning. There was screaming, yelling. He was got, got an ax. He was going, creating a posse to go after these coyotes. And there was a, a leash with just poodle fluff. And the park warden came up and said, what did I tell you last night? What did I say? And and this guy wanted to go off and kill the coyotes. And the the park warden said, "Who's problem with this right now? Yeah. It's not the coyotes because I came and warned you that they're danding up in this area. I told you not to do this. So it's it's all to come back to what we were starting off in the very beginning. It's the dog's owner's fault. Just didn't be stupid. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know, like Boston. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't tell this story, but next time you and I are together, Kevin, uh, ask me about my uh, my grandfather's dog. Dogs. Really? Any more? We'll, we'll talk You're later. Gonna cry. You're gonna make me cry again. Every time we get together, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're hit that nine o'clock hour. Uh, I think we're right. at the close up time. Uh, oh. Hopefully, uh, everybody got something out of this tonight. Um, it's uh, it's. Pretty good. If uh, if anybody has any questions, I would be more than happy to uh, to answer anything by email or uh, in in Facebook or anything like that. Or leave a comment below. We could take care of it, uh, or I could pass on questions maybe to Preston and Kevin if you have questions of them really? that we might have missed uh, missed here in the chat. 
I apologize for not being able to get stuff on the uh, screen here and, and more questions, but I'm at the mercy of StreamYard here, and it seems to be having difficulties with all the stuff that's going on right now. So, yeah, we'll try and get that all worked out for next time. Um, anyways, uh, just wanted Angel. to announce. Angel! Angel! She's not making that noise, is she? Okay. Angel! <laughs> She's like, we have a very cool show if we can get this guy's uh internet working proper and his feet on uh Streamyard based off a couple of weeks ago next week's guest for the show is going to be uh country recording artist jerry vanderveer oh nice yes nice. all right wait a minute here like look at this is the this this is wrong angel here you go <laughs> you bugged him for that little cookie? No, she thinks she's in trouble. <laughs> Come up, I'm holding the feet yeah, up. Well, definitely, everybody uh, might want to tune in next week there if you want to hear. I'm sure uh, Jerry will probably have his guitar out. We, uh, we'll get a couple of tunes in. You never know. Maybe we'll hear the song Blue Bandana. No, no. That That's the only good thing about this pandemic. It, it actually made me not play harmonica with that man. Uh, I'll, you bring your harmonica i'll bring mine too oh really you play harmonica no <laughs> <laughs> i have one but i don't hey <laughs> i know how to how, how to say puff and suck right puff and suck yeah it's a harmonica <laughs> turn <laughs> yeah. god everybody's minds are in the gutter but anyways, yeah, so tune on in. Hopefully we can get Jerry. Uh, last time we had tried to get Jerry on the show, he had uh, a lot of problems with his audio and stuff like that. Yeah. And it turned into a bit of a comical uh, routine, but uh, it worked out that he couldn't be on the show that night. So anyway, next Tuesday, Jerry Vandiver. Uh, if you haven't already done so tonight, please hit that subscribe button for Canoe Hound Adventures. Uh, I'd really appreciate the additional subscribers to the uh, channel. And if you haven't already done so and you really enjoyed this show tonight, please smash that thumbs up button. Uh, it helps YouTube sort of recognize this as a viable thing. And we're going to keep this whole community thing going and uh, keep it alive. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Preston and Kevin for joining tonight. Uh, your expertise in these fields uh, really uh, played well tonight. And uh, I even learned something. So that's a, that's a good thing, right? We, uh, we never stop learning. Look at out cold. That would be my dog too, and Nancy's nowhere to be seen. Yeah, there's mine on the bed, um, but I, I I pointed the camera in the one clean spot of the apartment, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show. Nancy's done. Awesome. Uh, for anybody in the chat that wants to get to know maybe Preston Sear a little better or Kevin Callen, I got uh, some links down in the description. You could check them out. Uh, check out Kevin's uh, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, all that stuff. Preston's got websites going there and stuff like that. Um, definitely check them out. And I will get a couple more links in the description below because we do have from that big announcement tonight about yeah. the uh, Ontario Backcountry Canoe Symposium is going live on YouTube right here on Canoe Hound Adventures. So okay. make sure uh, you put that on your calendar for April the 18th at 7 p.m. I uh, just want to thank everybody in the chat for showing up tonight. Appreciate your uh, your continued patronage to our uh, our channel here and the community and your participation. Yeah, participation is always welcome. And yeah. you guys got any closing statements before we sign off? I think yeah. I'm to my dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for having us. It, it's been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Get out there when we're allowed to. When we're allowed to, yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, you know, certainly consider rescuing a dog, adopting as opposed to shopping. There you go. Uh, Preston's uh, site, really check it out. Uh, he, he does some really good stuff, really good blogs, and he, um, yeah, has a lot of fun with his dog. Uh, really good guy, and yeah, check his stuff out if you, if you haven't. I think a lot of people have. Everybody knows him. So, uh, yeah, and his dog, uh, it, I love the dog to death, but if it eats my poo again, I, I, I'm not tripping with you ever again. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. Very nice. <laughs> craziness, craziness. All righty. So, everybody. Very nice of you. Thank you, Kevin. Please, gentlemen, stick around after we close out. But everybody in the chat, please, please, please stay safe and healthy uh, through these times. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the uh, live stream, please obey what your, your local government is suggesting. 
stay home, isolate, keep your hands clean, social distancing. Uh, you know, and you know what? Use FaceTime. Use uh, use Zoom. Use uh, I don't know Skype. Use these things. Connect with your loved ones, people you may not have seen for a while. Uh, a friendly face on the other side of the camera is always a good thing. So remember, stay safe and healthy. Hope to see you all next week. And remember, people, keep the adventures alive. Have a great week, everybody. Cheers. Thanks again. Bye, Preston. Bye, Nancy. Bye.